Good evening, everybody. Welcome aboard to the E.T. Whisperer's Patreon monthly poll winner. Tonight is June 15th, 2021. It's 10.33 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm your host, William Stowell, broadcasting to you live from Fincastle, Virginia. And I am here with all of you tonight and everybody's favorite E.T. Whisperer, Mr. Rob Gauthier. Good evening, Rob. How are you? I'm doing great, brother. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic, actually. I'm a little tired, but it's a good kind of tired, I think. You know, it uh, sounds like it's going to be a nice, mellow evening. Um, I know you'll be checking out while we're dealing with the channeling, so, you know, feels like there's uh, no real responsibility tonight. Yeah, that's, that's how it always goes. And I always enjoy my, my talk time with everybody, uh, too, before and after, so I just wanted to make sure I said hello to everybody real quickly. Sonia, hello. Savita, hello. My my good friend, Pantera, Lantia, also known as Ray, hello, how you doing, brother? My beautiful sunshine queen, hello, sweetheart. Uh, and uh, Adele, hello, how are you? It's nice to see you here. Wonderful guys that you're all here. Thank you guys for being here. Um, tonight we have a winner from the poll. You guys chose the topics, uh, but this month we didn't have any suggestions, so we had to dip back into last month's, which was surprising, and I think I know why. I think because when I labeled the thing, I usually label uh, poll suggestions and Q&A form, but a lot of new people weren't finding the Q&A form, so I named the post Q&A form and uh, poll suggestions, so... I think just nobody knew because they didn't want to read 150 paragraphs that I write every time on the on Patreon. So uh, I just took the ones from last month, and we had uh, some great ones last month. And what did we find out that the winner was, brother? Do you remember? I do, actually. I'm looking at it right now. The winner is what first contact with the Yael looks like. And this looks like it is Cliff's uh, suggestion, and I'm sure Cliff is going to be ecstatic. Oh, Cliff, Yay! Is Cliff here? I didn't actually look in the... Uh, no, Cliff is not here, but we did have uh, KC Galactic Travel Channel and Lambro stopping in. Hello, both of you guys. Welcome, welcome. Cliff usually checks in a little later, if I recall. Yeah, yeah, usually does when he's here. Because he knows we're going to be talking for 45 minutes. <laughs> exactly. Most people are like, all right, they said they'll start at uh, 9 tonight, so we'll be on at 10 and <laughs> catch the chance. <laughs> Tonight, I was running late. I actually got the stream set up super early this morning because I knew I just had this um, this feeling that I would be sliding in at the very last minute and I didn't want to have to wait to set the stream up. And it turned out to be just like that. I got a nice nap in today, though. That was wonderful. Ooh, that's always good. It's been a while since I've had one of those. Those are always nice to catch midday. Um we're just getting home, guys, and just getting back to normal from our travels. As most of you guys know, uh, after the surgery with the baby queen, his mom was ill, and then uh, we were told she had a couple days to, uh, to, to live. So we went down and said our goodbyes, came back to Michigan to take over our obligation with my son, and then went back to North Carolina for the funeral. Uh, we got back um, just about two weeks ago, but we're finally getting back to normal around here as far as our schedule and stuff it put us behind so a lot of you guys who are here on patreon also get personal sessions and a lot of you um have had to get rescheduled so i wanted to let anyone know if you have not been rescheduled yet please contact uh my sister mary at uh mary at etwhisper.com and let her know that you're still owed a session and let her know when the original time for your session was meant to be and she'll get you scheduled in uh, there might have been people who passed because she just took over the uh, scheduling right after the baby had her surgery. So she didn't even get properly trained for the first week or so because we were so busy at the hospital. Uh, if you slipped through the cracks, it wasn't intentional. Uh, we just had a lot going on. So please let Mary know. Uh, Deborah Myers, hello, hello. It's sweet Deborah's here, everybody. Um, and what yeah. does the ET Whisperer training program look like? Uh, I just well, imagine, like, this is your sister. I can't imagine that you're sitting her down in a classroom setting. Like, this is the official E.T. Whisperer training program. Well, I did have to run her through a couple of sexual harassment videotapes. <laughs> right, right, policies, safety policies, OSHA, drug testing. Yeah, eye, eyeglass protection. <laughs> no, it was actually pretty great. Uh, I just popped on a video, showed her how the calendar worked, showed her our personal calendar with... Uh, the times and stuff for the baby, so for when we open up daytime sessions, which we're hoping to do soon. 
uh, and then that was about it. She's a pretty quick learner, a pretty smart lady. So, um, yeah, it's been great. Hello, Savita, too. I think I said hello to you, Savita. Um, yeah, uh, you know what? Don't don't thank me for the music guy. Oh, the Mongolian music. Yes. Yeah, I did put that in the uh, chat, and I'm going to drop that again for you guys who weren't here. Um, uh, earlier, this is a throat singer I found. I think Vashta, Vashta Narada, the ET artist, um, she's the one who showed me this guy originally, but he's amazing. Uh, that's a great um, duo of his and another throat singer friend of his uh, who do a um, tribute to Genghis Khan uh, because they are Mongolian, and Genghis Khan was like considered the, the grandfather of all Mongolia. So, uh, yeah, it was a pretty great song. Um, but, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed that, Savita. Um what else? Oh, yes. So, everyone, uh, what we've got going on tonight, we're going to channel uh, the poll winner from this month, uh, and that was uh, what first contact with the IEL looked like. Yes. And then what we're going to do on the 30th is do our Q&A. For those of you who might be new, the Q&A form was not the post from tonight with tonight's link on it. It was the post before that. It should have been posted right around the 5th. Uh, and again on the 10th. So both of the last posts before tonight's post, you should be able to get the link for those on there. If not, I know for sure it's on the 5th, uh, if it's not on the last one. Uh, so go there, and we, we just ask you guys one question per person uh, to put your name or nickname on there. If you don't want to share your real name, that's fine. Um, then make sure that you put... Uh, you know, if it's to Ardip or Treb, and then ask question. We ask no questions within questions, no multiple paragraphs of questions. We know that you got to give information or, or, or do it. But, um, you know, just try to make it as simple as you can because when we do those, those can be a little hectic. Uh, we've got a lot of questions from a lot of people. And the differential in our tier system right now, we took away all the high tiers because only a few people were using them, and they ended up causing manual uh, scheduling, which was very difficult. Uh, and some people got behind because, you know, we usually book longer than a month. Uh, we usually book like a month to a month and a half out, so people weren't being able to book every month as they were paying every month, so they ended up getting owed. Anyway, long story short, the two tiers, the only difference in it now, until we start doing our events again, uh, which we will be announcing hopefully by the 30th, some dates for some uh, possible uh, events online or in person that we might be doing later this year. Uh, but until that comes along, the only difference between the 11 and $22 tiers is that in the 30th on Q&A night, if you're $22 uh, tier, your question gets put into the poll or to the uh, mixture bowl twice, not your uh, question itself, but your name for the question. And then when you're $11, you get put in once. That was the only way we could find um, to, you know, give, give extra value to people who are paying more uh, until we get to our events. And then when we do our events, any online events that we do is free uh, for the $22 tier people. And uh, for you guys, both, both tiers will get different level percentage discounts to live events. Um, like I think, uh, the $11 tier is 10% and the $20 tier was 20% off any live event that we do Ex for ET whisper and not with a channel panel. That's a whole different ball game, a whole different thing. Um, but as far as my events go, uh, we'll get a percentage off that for that, no matter what tier you are, just a higher percentage off on the $22. So we just wanted to make sure you guys are aware of that and that if you put your questions in, um, before the 30th, they will get thrown in to be asked. The only thing that might uh, disqualify the question is if it's a, uh, a question that doesn't follow the rules, if it's asking questions within questions, or if it's five paragraphs long, things like that uh, are the only way. Um, also, the other kind of rule that we've got uh, is not to ask questions about the energies of other people. Trevin Ardiff, if you say, hey, um, you know, my mother and father, uh, took me out of their will you know why did they do that uh, they can't connect to the other entity unless they give them permission so unless it's a dynamic between you and someone else like hey you know why do i notice this theme in my relationship with this person 
um, they're not going to be able to give you as much information. So the question can be asked, but you might not get an answer for it. So you just don't want you wasting your questions. But that's on the 30th, guys, of this month. And if you get your uh, questions in, it will get thrown into the pot, uh, depending on what level you are, how many times it'll get thrown in the pot. And that'll be on the 30th, around the same time as tonight. We try to do it between 9.30 and 10.30. Uh, and we usually have a better idea of close to the amount of time on the day, uh, which we try to post at least a couple hours before, so everyone knows around what time we'll start. <laughs> it just it's, depends. It's but. amazing we get done like, you know, we get it down as close as we do, given the lifestyles you and I both lead exactly that's exactly it it's uh both of our lives are a little uh little experienced rich <laughs> i always say crazy so i'm trying to change my verbiage and things right. it's experience rich and <laughs> there are many so that... times where either you're reminding me we're doing this or i'm reminding you that we're doing this yeah. it's like oh god we're going live tonight <laughs> actually William's great at this, guys. He, he's actually been like, oh, my God, that's tonight, and had plans and changed his plans. He's a great guy, man. He, he does this uh, for, for all of us, uh, as well as for himself, too, I know. But thank you, brother, for, for stepping in and helping us out, man. It it's really means the world to us. And yeah, I have uh, deeply selfish motivations for doing this. There's nothing <laughs> ennobling about humanity. It's totally self-serving. <laughs> that's fine <laughs> uh, but i will tell you from the conversation me and william had earlier which i won't divulge the specific content but i will tell you as as exteriorly tough as william's personality can be he still is a big softy and i, I poked fun at him earlier for it too he, he cares how people feel sometimes all right <laughs> sometimes no i i'm um <laughs> You know, I don't know. It's maybe after we're all dead, we'll be able to see the totality of how we were perceived by every individual we ever encountered. It's uh, you could spend an entire lifetime just wondering how you're perceived by other people, because it's never the same perception. What what versions yeah. of reality are people creating of us that we never even know? Oh yeah, that would be a hugely interesting afterlife process. Um. I know for me it would be pretty easy. People either love me as a person, uh, love me as a channeler, or think I'm absolutely insane and a lot of in between. Um, so that's that would be an easier one, I think, for me. But you're right, individually, the amount of people um, that I've bumped into just in this life has been phenomenal. Even before I did channeling and did it publicly and was known for doing it, I knew, like I personally had, you know, dozens of friends, maybe even up to a hundred friends that I dealt with on a daily basis. So, um, yeah. Well, I was thinking about things, and you know, you can always count on me to get philosophical on the ET Whisperer Hour here. But <laughs> I have um, a snapshot. We were at the Statue of Liberty in New York. It's like 1986, August, and uh, we're on the ferry heading over to the island, and I've got a picture of it, and there's this old man in there. He was just a guy in the crowd. I have no idea who he is. He wasn't with our group. We don't know him. Don't know his name. Uh, it was long before the internet ever existed. All I have is a snapshot. And it's always captivated me. Is like this guy has no idea he's in my snapshot. And that every time I look at my Statue of Liberty trip uh, pictures that I see this guy and I wonder about him. You know, just little things like that. Mm. Yeah, that's amazing. Because uh, I've had experiences like that before somebody who was going through something that I would pass in an experience that was extremely meaningful for me and then I would see this person going through their own thing that was also either horrible for them uh, very fun and exciting for them I remember one time I had this aha moment when I was uh, just got done with the meditation and I went out and these people were getting married um, a young couple and I remember both of their faces uh, just like it was yesterday and the joy that they were having on that day and you know the other people on the side most was having fun a few people were uh, not having so much fun but I remember it like it was yesterday because it was such a meaningful thing and I always think about that every time I see a wedding it reminds me of those two yeah like where are they now did they make it are they still together yeah are they alive still all of it right you know, it's just interesting, interesting little things like that. 
you know, and that's uh, also to get even deeper, deeper philosophical. I was thinking about older people sometimes. You know, I see a lot of them around now. And Artif has talked about how this year a lot of people are going to be dropping out of physical reality for reasons that are important to them, you know, known only to them. I think about older people and everything and uh, even some younger people and how their lives seem to dead end. And I know, you know, when you're younger, you know, you're like 15, you get your learner's permit. You're 16, you get a license. And you're, you're 18, you can, you can vote and buy lotto tickets or whatever. And there's these little milestones in life, you know, and you get maybe you join the military, you go to college or you get married. And then what? Like, that's kind of it. Like, it's like as a society, there's no other, like, real milestones. It's kind of up to you to make those milestones. Uh. And I think that's why a lot of people dead end their lives. They've got nothing else that they're, you know, what is a society do we tell 42-year-olds to go after? Like, nothing. Yeah, that's true. And, and all the milestones after those points are usually milestones even if they're societal uh, to certain groups of people or, or certain um, communities, they're still not usually flattering. You know, you're 25, congratulations, you can get better, cheaper car insurance. Wow, you're 40, now you're over the hill, old guy. Mm. Uh, 65, now you can retire, haha, and eat up your savings, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, nothing of that is of a significant nature that's celebratory. Right. I just read a story today about a guy uh, out here in Appalachia. He's 79 years old and he goes around. He has uh, reintroduced about 1,200 species of rare apples into society, sometimes going on these little quests looking for sole surviving rare apple trees that haven't been circulated in over 100 years. And he takes clippings and clones them. And he's like, that guy does, you know, he's not waiting around for his social security check or anything. Like, he's out doing something with his life. You know, he's, he's probably going to live another 20 or 30 years just because he has something to do. You know, you're absolutely right. When I was young, I grew up in the 80s, small town, Midwestern, you know, right here in southwest Michigan. Uh, we lived in a little town called Schoolcraft. And, you know, back then, I think it had maybe 1,200, 1,400 people, close to 2,000 by the time I got a teenager, very small. It didn't see its first stoplight or fast food restaurant. McDonald's was the first one there uh, until 1993 or 94. And I remember back in about 88, uh, this old guy ran a gas station. And this gas station had a, a place for auto repair. And my, my best friend's uh, father... Um, at that time own or he was the mechanic who worked there so he didn't own the place but he owned the mechanic part of it and he would always uh, be there working on the car so I spent a lot of time there and the old guy who owned it I got to know him his name was Lester and this guy was already in his late 70s when I met him so I, I watched him growing up uh, you know he, he was probably in his 80s by the time I first met him I watched this guy work until he was 98 years old. He was slow, moving, obviously, his body was old, but he, he showed up to work every day. He never got sick. He was always, uh, he was always a kind of an asshole, mm -hmm. uh, but he was, you know, he did his job. He did it well. People liked him because he did his job well. And he ended up losing the gas station because the economy, you know, if you weren't a speedway or whatever, you can't have a gas station anymore. So he lost his gas station. He ended up opening up his own U-Haul. He worked until he was 98 or 99. And six months after his business got shut down, he died. Six months after, because he had nothing left to go with. Nothing left to live for. I know. And that's what, you know, this is, I haven't really led on to it, but this has kind of been a personal thing for me. That's why I mention it. And there's one of my uh, old professors. I was very dear friends with this man. He retired on Friday, and he was dead the following Friday. And um, Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? No, this was like – but that's not even who I was thinking about. I'm thinking about people I knew from high school or people that uh, I don't want to mention anybody. Like in the 1980s, I'd hang out with them, and they were so vibrant and everything. And like now, like they're basically just hoarders, you know, chilling out somewhere, not doing anything with their lives. Or people that I knew in high school that are the same exact age as me, and like they're just – they just don't have that spark anymore, you know, and it's, uh, 
it's kind of upsetting. You know, that's why I bring this up. There's a couple people like that now. It's like, what happened? What are you living for? And, you know, like leading the horse to water, even with all of our metaphysical knowledge and, and spirit medium powers and all that other stuff, you can't you can't help these people if they don't want to be helped. No, and that's that's the thing that I think bummed me out the first when I was doing channeling was realizing that all I wanted to do was help people who might be able to find some use or value to the, to the type of information that I was able to channel with Treb because what Treb taught me changed my life, black and white, 100%, uh, all the way around. And I was like, if I can do that for one person, that'd be great. Well, some people would come along, and then all of a sudden they would disappear or get into some really crazy stuff and, and kind of get washed away into the background. And it always kind of broke my heart at first. And it took me a long time to realize, you know, as, as valid as their experience with me was, they need the other experiences, bad or good, for their own self and their own experience and I, I can't take the responsibility for people not wanting to make their life okay um, the, the kid who I talked about who owned the gas station, his father um, uh, like I said he's been like a brother to me my whole life I still talk to him once every week once every couple of weeks um, and I have for a long time uh, whether it's a few texts on the phone or, or call when I'm driving to a doctor's appointment you know five minutes here and there We've been close for so long, and his brother was also very close to me. Um, his brother was actually slightly closer to my age than he was, uh, but being like a brother to me, he he lived this lifestyle that was extremely self-centered, almost to a level of sociopath, because he didn't give a shit what was going on in anyone's life if it didn't affect him. Mm -hmm. Um, like when my dad was sick, uh, he was, I told him, yeah, I can help you. I can get you some money and stuff, but you need to be patient, man. My dad's in the hospital for all I know he could be dying, you know? And the thing he said, well, how does that help me? I mean, that's what type of person this guy was. And it took me forever because I loved the guy so much. And because we had been through so much history together, it was hard for me to finally say, you know what? I'm done. And it happened when I was helping another friend of mine, a guy I'd known almost 20 years, um, who tried to commit suicide and had a 25-year drug addiction uh, really heavily. He was done with drugs. He's like, I really got to stop using or I'm going to die. And I said, I can try to help you. So me and Kalina helped get, um, a, a, what do you call it, like um, – you know, uh, where you put up and people can give money uh, to help a cause. A GoFundMe. Go yeah, yeah, that's it. Thank you. And um, we put up a GoFundMe. And at the same time, my my good friend's brother was like, hey, I need some help, man. I'm broke. I'm out in the streets because he was using drugs and because he didn't want to get a job and because he was living with dirt balls and, and just getting high all day. And he's like, hey, you know, I need some money. And I what I see you got time to play around on Facebook with all your channel and friends and this and that, but you can't answer my, my message. And I said, listen, you have my cell phone number. No one on Facebook does. You, my number hasn't changed in 15 years. <laughs> uh, text me if you need to talk to me. I only saw your, your message because it popped up as I was here doing something to help Dale. Well, he saw me helping another friend and asked me for money and I told him, if I can get money, I'll, I'll throw it to you. Because that's, that's the only time I heard from him. And then he, the first thing he texts me is like, there, now I text you. How's that ass hat or something like that? And I said, you know what? I lose my number. We're done. That, that was the straw that broke the camel's back, even though all the other straws should have broke it. It was just like this completely selfish person, not ever going to change. And it it should not have ever taken me that much abuse from this guy to tell him to get lost. And that's been, God, that's been four or five years. I haven't talked to him still. I, I don't think I ever will unless, unless he were to call up and be off drugs and be doing better now and say, Hey, I'm sorry for being a jerk. And even then, I don't know, you know, the Capricorns are a little, bit, a little bit like Scorpios in the way where if you do them wrong and it's real wrong, you know, they're loyal friends to the end, but if you do them badly, real bad, it, it, you're lucky if they ever talk to you again. I'm the same way. And, um, you know, it's like the nerve on this guy, man, it was just horrible. But that's what people cannot 
if they don't help themselves, you're not going to be able to help them. And all the friends who I've ever had who I've helped have been people who are willing to help themselves or who are willing to help me even. <laughs> you know, it's it's a two way street and, and this guy is just such such a jerk, man. Well, I'm I'm really better off for not having him in my life, honestly. No, these are interesting topics. I was listening to um <clears throat> Barbara Marciniak is back kind of underground. Uh, I, I couldn't even tell you what site that she's on now, but I just got her latest one and I started listening to it. And she's been channeling for 33 years now. As of May 18th, it was her 33rd anniversary channeling. And uh, she was talking about actually the Seth material a lot in the last channeling I was listening to, how she was basically addicted to the Seth material before her channeling began. Uh, but one thing that she said that really stuck with me, something I've kind of thought of but never quite in this way before, is that this um, set what Seth brought about what the what art of talks about in Treb and your message is that you create your own reality that your beliefs and expectations form your reality and right now there seems to be a uh, very large victim mentality sweeping our society and um, this is an anti you create your own reality message and it never quite occurred to me like that you know, because I certainly know people because I'm successful. You know, I'm not I'm not a millionaire yet or anything like that, but I'm very successful. I certainly make my own hours and I don't have to I don't have to clock in anywhere like that. And I started helping people out um, before I was even really able to help myself out. And I've noticed that there are some people that will just never stop taking. And they they're in a headspace where, you know, they're probably no time in this incarnation. Are they going to realize uh, an existence of self-actualization. Yeah, it's it's rough because it, that's the challenge with people who have the beliefs with other things. It's easy, even knowing you create your own reality at whatever degree you're willing to accept that at, um, it's still easy to roll with the victim. When you said that the victimhood consciousness is sweeping the earth, it's funny because I literally have always been the type of person who's like, you know what, times are tough, but you know, so what? They're always tough in some way, shape, or form. Let's just put our head down and keep running. But the last couple of years, I've had moments where I found myself going, oh my God, this is so hard, man. Everything is tough and everything is shitty right now. And I've never done that. Ever since my, my own awakening, mm -hmm. to my own ability, I'd never done that. So I think a collective form of that energy has to happen also so that people can see the powers that they do have. Um, you know, I know a lot of people in tough spots. Uh, they're, they're in neighborhoods, countries, places where there's no jobs to be seen, people are corrupt, the government's corrupt, uh, the money that's sent out for assistance gets put in the politicians' pockets, and these people still wake up every day saying, I'm going to try to get something done today. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, it's, it's all amazes I, me. And I, I don't know anything about your background, but all I have to do is think about my ancestors and how they lived like animals just to get to America. Uh, you know, my bro my grandparents had like 13 brothers and sisters. Not all of them lived. And they, when they did live, they were all living in a single room. My own father had a seventh grade. My great grandfather uh, rode a horse. You know, now I drive a Caprice Classic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, my father had a seventh grade education. Yeah, dude, it's my my more direct. My mom's side of the family was really bad. I actually haven't talked about it a lot, partially for the privacy of my own mom. Um, but her family had a lot of mental illness, a lot of poverty. Um, her own father, uh, my mother's father, was very abusive to all the kids. Uh, really bad, really bad stuff, and. The reason he was messed up, mentally ill, like in and out of mental hospitals all the time, he his own father was shot by his grandfather in front of him over a dog because they were all alcoholics, drunk beyond capacity. So he watched his own father be murdered by his grandpa. Um, so this is the type of, of things that were happening just a couple generations ago. Right. And now people worry that they ran out of caramel at Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I know we're talking in generalizations. And if I could tie this into tonight's topic about uh, the first contact we're having with the uh, Yael, um, I think from what Artif's talking about with so many people leaving physical reality, basically dying this year, the rubber is meeting the road. 
as individuals and as a species, we have to accept that we are the ones creating this, even the horrible things that are happening, or we're not going to be fit to meet anyone from off this planet from another world. A absolutely, brother. And um, I, I agree with you 100%. I think this is where the rubber meets the mo uh, road. And, and I want to say hi to Alan, too. Hello, Alan. It's been a long time since I've seen you, since I've chatted with you. Uh, so glad to see you here, brother. So glad to see you here. Uh, insomnia definitely does have the positive side effect when you get a, uh, come into the to the uh, Patreon live and join us live. So it's wonderful to see you here, brother. It's amazing what contact will look like. And I know I've the contact thing has been brought into the awareness more publicly now than ever because they're putting it on mainstream news. And right there, that tells a lot of people don't trust it, mm -hmm. you know, because the mainstream media is not known for their honesty yeah, I don't or believe their... <laughs> anything the government tells me. <laughs> no. And that's the problem. Um, I just wish most... when I was in the Air Force, I knew then what I know now because I had like clearance to like crazy stuff. I didn't even care if I had known then what I know now, I'd probably be in Guantanamo Bay for leaking it all. But, um, you being a military police, uh, you, you had access to a lot of things. Yeah. They, you had to get, yeah, actually it was weird because in the military as a police officer, I had to have clearance everywhere. Cause if something happened, I had to show up. And also the Coca-Cola guy had the same clearance because he had to go fill the soda machines in the restricted area like, I'm not even kidding. It was ridiculous. Oh, that's amazing. The janitor, like the ja you want to know what's really going on. You talk to a janitor, like anywhere. The yes. Hospitals, uh, you know, everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah, but I think it's funny that these low on the totem pole people, as far as, you know, society is concerned. I've been a janitor for myself, but, you know, oftentimes they're more plugged in than the most high up people up there. Yeah, oh, I bet. And that's, that's, they're, they're getting access to everything all the time, and people don't think twice about talking around someone who's mopping up behind them, you know what I mean? Right. Oh, but it's UFOs, almost, though, that's how we were talking about the military. So. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's um, the beautiful nature of what's happening now is that it will bring things to awareness. And I have a lot of people who talk to me who are very nervous about it because the government is... Uh, known to, to lie is also known to fake uh, certain things in order to push their own narrative. Uh, their concern, Stephen Greer, brings this right dead into our community that um, the military and government's desire to have a fake UFO attack uh, to justify spending on military defensive budgets. But I hate to be this way. If an alien race really attacked us, like uh, draconian ships or something that came down, I mean, there would there would be no defense for us except for other ETs that might say, "Hey, you shouldn't kill these humans. You know, they're they're primitive still, or whatever the case is." We're not going to survive through it. So to think that they could fool the public into saying we were just attacked by people uh, who figured out how to travel time space but can't land uh, a bomb, you know, <laughs> or an attack on on us without us. Uh, you know, America kicking their ass with our primitive jets. I mean, come on, guys. This isn't really uh, something that people would buy. Maybe some people will. I mean, I've seen a lot of people buy a lot of things the government sells to them. But it's hard to say uh, how much that fear is going to hold people back, too, because that fear, in a collective sense, is a vibration sent out in the collective consciousness, which has always been the flag and indicator for a lot of races who work with earth that want to help us that actually have uh, better plans or ideas for humans than those who are malevolent who have tried to interfere and who've tried to cause havoc and that's that's the balance here that's oh yeah the situation and that goes back to uh, like what are we ourselves doing to bring up our vibration you saw without going into the details or saying anything you saw whatever your beliefs were how everyone behaved about coronavirus Imagine when there's giant praying mantis people walking the streets, you know, yes, that's a whole we're not ready to be anywhere close to there. We're not ready. Yeah, I, I, I think that that might be resistant. But I also think that the the virus situation with divided perspectives also gives an allowance for people to argue out all the things that they need to get off their chest that we've been holding back for years, which might clear the air for that. And what would really be nice is if there's an honest way 
for people to find out information, no matter how it pans out, of of the truth of all the things that we've been hearing two sides about uh, fighting for the last six years, starting back uh, before Trump got in office and, and going through that, having that division finally be released by people coming in and saying, here, here's the evidence, uh, here's what this side did or this side did, they lied to you here, they lied to you here, this is the proof, and bust everybody who's who's done wrong just to get everybody back on the same page. It would have to be something like that that would create a bridge between the groups of people that have been pushed deliberately, in my opinion, so far to the brink of the opposite ends of the spectrum where there might be able to to be a common sense of, oh my God, we all were lied to by both sides, this side, that side, whatever it ends up being. And that would really do a lot of healing for the collective. Then we might be able to start getting on that page. Yeah. Um, but until that pops up or manifests, I don't know. Yeah, I think I think many people are sophisticated enough to realize that there is an unseen hand sort of guiding uh, the perception of world events. You know, whatever that is, is open to individual interpretation. But I think many people are more aware of that now than ever before. Are we at the tipping point yet? Who knows? Yeah, beautiful point. You know, no matter what side you think of politics or coronavirus or whatever, no matter what side you think about anything in life, uh, it's it's easier and easier to see that either the, the people you don't like or the media or governments or, you know, whoever is pushing and peddling uh, stuff to try to get people fighting with each other or to fool people and people – Especially people in our community, people in the truther community, people in the UFO community. These are three communities that have already been on their tippy toes. They've already been uh, presented with information that's way further ahead of them than what most people have. And that gives them a greater opportunity to discern the bullshit before they get to it. So they're already meeting all of these things we've been hearing with either hesitance or an open mind and heart trying to assess it from the level it's really coming in instead of all the layers of, of intentional confusion or unintentional confusion or just we don't know what's going on, but we're going to tell you we do to make you feel better. No matter what level of, of manipulation that might be there, these communities that we're a part of actually have a huge advantage in that situation scenario, I think. Oh, yeah. You know, just by being members of Generation X, we're automatically skeptical. <laughs> I think we were the most skeptical generation that there was. Um, yeah, yeah, a big time. Oh, I had an important point with all this, though, is that, uh, oh, Dr. Stephen Greer, you mentioned him, and when I was reading on Patreon, somebody else had mentioned him in the comments that they had found the CE5 contact group. Was it in Germany? I don't know. I have to look now. Uh, who said this? Tracy of Tracy's. Tracy just found about a CE5 group in Liverpool, where Tracy lives. I guess Tracy's a woman. I yeah, think. I think so. Yes, Tracy, when I click on the picture. Tracy, is. I also know some men named Tracy. But yes, fan, uh, the point is, Dr. Stephen Greer, I saw his CE5 documentary. I don't know if you've seen it or not. But he's basically talking about what you're talking about, is that the real contact is going to happen in the way that you're doing it, ET whispering, uh, making a direct psychic link with these beings. Yeah, and this is the thing. This is this is the thing I have with Stephen Greer personally, and and I I, I don't usually uh, I haven't up until the last year or so talked about my feelings about other people who are in our community intentionally because I I don't you know I, I think if you're getting something good from someone regardless of what I think of it it's good for you. Right. But with Stephen Greer, I have a real uh, pull push relationship with his material. Because he has done some of the most groundbreaking information, he's he's brought some of the most uh, heavy proof when it comes to telepathic communication with UFOs. The CE fives uh, yield results nearly every time he does them. Um, so there is a lot of great stuff that he's done with the community, but also stuff that he brings in this time, talking about the military faking and that we all better be uh, aware of it. And then asking for money to, to do the documentary when people um, have already offered to do a lot of stuff. 
that's the type of stuff that makes other people question them. So then I have to put my energy there too. As a person, I feel like regardless of what position I am in the community, I also have to be cognizant of my own um, biases, my own morality, my own opinions. And then I have to look at it. And sometimes it just doesn't feel all the way right with him because he has a lot of good stuff. But then he, he also... Uh, says you know i'm right and everyone else is wrong and and that type of attitude always doesn't sit well with me when so i'm the greatest channeler in the world uh, no one can channel like i can that's ridiculous um different people channel different people teach different people do at different levels because that's what's needed for the collective so there is that that pull but i think in the larger sense he's done more good than harm or, or more positive than possibly negative things for our community by a long shot. And Kalina's uh, dad was heavily involved, uh, vice president of the North uh, Carolina chapter of, um, I, I want to say SETI, but it wasn't. Maybe it was. Um, MUFON. MUFON. Uh, yeah, and that's, <laughs> so he knew Stephen Greer personally when Stephen Greer first started getting into this stuff. And he always loved Stephen. He said he was a great guy. Uh, so... You know, it's a different perspective, I think. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing also about um, the Internet, actually, is that, uh, you know, with the Internet now, you can't... Like, years ago, you could listen to an album and like, wow, I really love this song, and that was it. Well, now, because of the Internet, you can find out that the song that you really love, uh, the bandmates all hated each other, and the artist was a heroin-abusing junkie who beat women all the time in a trailer park, and like, man... I just really wanted to listen to the song. Yeah. You know, I, if I started yes. blacklisting all the music just because of stuff like that. So I just listen to the music is, is my motto. And, yeah. it's, you know, so and like um, like the way he handles his finances, like oh, well, that's his, his business. If it wasn't for the Internet, we probably wouldn't know or care. Just think of him <laughs> like a bum on the side of the street that you give five dollars to. You know, he's probably going to go buy that Thunderbird wine, but you don't really care. That's not why you're giving him the five dollars. Right, exactly. And I get your point there, too. And I actually have similar feelings throughout, too. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, dude, you can't listen to that music. That guy called this person a certain word or whatever. And I, I've always been able to separate the music from the musician, the person from the material. Um, there are uh, a lot of people in our own community who, who have... Uh, not so wonderful personalities and they have decent material uh or you know some people unfortunately just like musicians their first two albums are great and then they were so worried about pumping out music it becomes horrible then there are people like that in our community too who just let their heads get so big it destroys everything that they send because it's sent in such a way that it's horrible so you know how many people won't listen to the seth material because there was a ouija board involved oh yeah for sure for yeah. sure you know, just because of stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing, too. I, I find myself more in the last couple of years thinking about stuff like that, whereas I used to not. I used to say, you know what? I, I like this. I don't like that. Um, so there is – see, and this is the whole thing, man. This is what I've been talking about with everybody. The last years, I really put my earth hat back on. So I've really been more human than I've been in a long time. And I know it sounds stupid. But – um. I, I, I had so much time channeling and in my etherical energy. I really didn't ground to a lot of Earth situations, but now I, I kind of want to get in there to see what's going on. And part of that's the evaluation of how I, I bring up uh, our, our new daughter. You know, she's brand new to this world. I, I haven't been on the world for a long time. I've been in my own little bubble for that time. And I needed to get back into it. But part of it's also the, the realization that Earth is of two vibrations it's of good and of bad and we can't ignore either one and i've never been one to ignore the bad things that happen because uh, a lot of people lose their compassion in our community by doing that i've heard chandlers say well this is the uh manifestation of these people getting murdered and raped and you know well that's their sole choice it's like sure maybe on a soul level that's true but this person's family just got killed or raped, you know? They need compassion. They don't need you saying, well, their soul wanted to, mm. you know? that's uh, No, it's a fine line because the first perspective yes. is equally valid. Right, right. No, absolutely. And that's the thing. It's, it's, 
it's the balance that we've got to find in ourselves to be able to find the balance there. And I'm finding new balances all the time. And some of them are way out of bounds from what I used to do. And some of them are incorrect <laughs> in the balance that I used to have. Yeah. Uh, so I have to find my way into going back to that balance too. Yeah. Everything's going to be changing is like, um, the way that relationships exist uh, in all types of relationships, not just man, woman relationship, parent and child relationships. I've been meeting, um, running across so many young children lately that are so put together and so well spoken in a way that uh, kids weren't when we were younger. Yeah, and I found the opposite end of that spectrum too. Where as bad as as we behaved in the '90s, um, some kids that live around here are also on the opposite spectrum. They're a lot worse than <laughs> what we were in that time too. Yeah, uh, oh, there's that too. There's that. Yeah, too. yeah, and that's the thing. It, I think it's just the representing a spectrum that's much larger in both ways. Hey, hey, hi, hi. I made you some coffee. Oh, look at this. Kalina is competing. With a coffee, uh, capital of the world. Sorry, William, yeah. if I could fly one over to you too, I would tell no, you. No, William's got his already. It's okay. I saw yeah. him get his before he started. Yeah, <laughs> Thank sorry you, Mama. I make it iced because we don't have that. No, but... that's perfect. Thank you, Mama. Yep, we got your fancy new thing uh, on. Yeah, thank you, sweetie. I love you. <laughs> and Queen of says hi to you guys too. Guys. I know she was saying hi in the chat, but hello. Hi, thank you, Mama. Hi. Hi from William. Oh, that's wonderful, man. I was not expecting that. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, I, we've been talking for a while now. Um, I know, but uh, I'm starting to develop a theme. See, this always happens is that we talk and we're like, man, we really talk too long. But then Artif will come in and bring it all together that what we were talking about. So I'm trying to guess the theme tonight is that we're going to have to, I know it's cliche, but strike more of a balance. Because say we're going to have first contact with alien beings. Um it's probably not just our environment that would have to be hospitable to them, but the vibrational environment. Yeah. I mean, that's something, um, I, I've heard two stories about this, uh, recently too. Uh, Artif shared some information about the time that his race came to earth on a fifth density long ago, uh, many, many incarnations ago. Uh, and also there was a reptilian race that came to Chile and was met with hostility. And when Ardiff came, um, when they had to manifest their density bodies in order to come into the earth, uh, it actually affected certain behavioral levels of their own consciousness too, because they were put from this vibration of, of clarity, uh, connectedness, love, and then brought it right to that. So when they, they interacted with humans, uh, they would have a little different energy than what they would, and some of their feelings, emotions, became more Earth-like, which was very foreign to them, and they had to access a lot of that stuff unknowingly um, in the moment. They had to, to work through that, which was a bit of a hardship, too. So it was an amazing story. Hopefully I'll share some of that tonight, too. It made me think of that scene in E.T. when he gets drunk and puts on the flannel shirt. <laughs> yeah, art up with the flannel, guys. Yeah, uh, any artist out there? That's the other thing too. Uh, if we got any artists in the house, William's been asking uh, anybody who wants to draw some ET art of art of, of Treb of any entity you might have heard us channel before, uh, Metatron, Nihal Collective. Um, we really would like to get people to send in their art because if the art that you guys send is something. Uh, that we could easily print on a shirt that everyone would like. We're, we're, we're doing shirts. William's made out a bunch of prints. Me and Clean have been going through them uh, slowly as we're just, like I said, getting back to real life. Mm -hmm. uh, so those will be available soon, too. We're going to do that, man. Um, as you guys know, I've, I've talked about challenges in our own life as far as it comes to finding our own balance and abundance with financials because – the model that I have set up right now without being able to do events and travel is, you know, one hour of my time equals money. And that's the only way. So I have a finite amount of energy to give. Um, so I've been trying to think of getting recordings back out and starting to do stuff like that to make passive income to help us be able to set up more events. And I don't want to jinx anything, but me and Kalina tomorrow morning are actually going to be going to some an 18 acre lot of uh 
a land that we're going to look at and we're going to see uh, if it feels good and if it feels right. And it's right on a lake, a privately owned lake, 15 minutes away from Lake Michigan. A uh, beautiful place. Um, we're going to look at it and see if there's some way we can manifest the energy towards that. Because we would like to be able to have our own place out of town and also have a place we can do retreats at. Uh, or have at very least, uh, you know, if we ever move out of state, we'll have a home in Michigan. So that's something we've been putting energy in. So if any of you guys feel like sending love or energy that way towards us for the help of manifesting of that, that's something we've always wanted since we've known each other. There's a place to do uh, retreats, events, uh, things like that, or just relaxation with all of our friends and, and, and do it that way. Whatever the case is, we're working on manifesting a more open version of that energy. So tomorrow we're going to go check it out. We're going to go put our feet on the ground and, and drive over there and take a peek. No, you're going to have the uh, Gauthier Institute for Advanced Psychic Studies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's a brilliant idea. I, I mean, like that. That's, uh, you know, not to jinx it for either of us, but that's one of the things I'm working on here in Fincastle. You know, I have a significant land investment here. Yes. Um, and that's one of the things I wanted to do in Fincastle. Uh, Amanda and Carolina and Valerie. Valerie's a substance abuse and mental health counselor, and we've wanted to set up things where you could come in, you could do Monroe-type binaural beat booths. We would have the um, those flotation tanks, the little, mm. you know, any, anything uh, that you could possibly need as far as holistic arts. We wanted to have a facility and a center down here where you could achieve that. That's beautiful, bro. That's a huge thing to give to the collective. Um, and your sister, uh, I know all of you have beautiful talents. You know, I know you did, um, you, what was your degree in sociology? Yeah, I'm a sociologist. Right. So that along with all of the things uh, that both uh, Carolina and Amanda uh, possess as well as your sister, I mean, that, that's huge, man. That could be huge. Oh, yeah, and we're, we all have a metaphysical mindset. You know, Caroline is an RN and also a fantastic photographer and artist. <clears throat> uh, oh, yeah. Amanda's Her work is amazing. She's the one who did our painting, guys, the one that we showed you with uh, Trev and Arda. Yeah, I can flash that up here right now, actually. Yeah, yeah, please do. And um, let's see, Amanda's a classical studies major. She's very involved in antiquity and did her dissertation on um, ancient mystery cults and psychedelic drugs, anthenogens. They would... Um, how they would connect to the uh, spiritual world using psychedelics, essentially. Um, and Valerie is really big in uh, helping people beat hard drugs using M uh, MDMA and mushrooms. She has a future in that also. And all That's this amazing. Well, I mean, look at how you turned into the ET Whisperer, was dealing with your own sorts of problems thanks to the Monroe Institute. Yeah, and that, that was a life-altering moment where I had already started this beautiful journey and hit a plateau and just couldn't get any further. And that took me not just to a different level of the plateau, it took me to the mountaintops. Well, you know, we talked about this with Saturn transiting Capricorn about how all systems were falling apart. We talked about this two years ago, and look at it now. Uh, college enrollments are down. Nobody wants to go back to college. They think it's basically mm -hmm. useless. People are quitting their... Uh, I was at a Denny's the other night. They're begging people to come on. They had 11 open positions. People aren't going back to work. They're finding their own thing to become self-supporting and self-sustaining locally, either mm. with a trade or bartering. Uh, corporate America is dying. Nobody trusts the medical community anymore, especially after the Fauci emails. Um, every major system we've ever had is falling apart. Religion, they can't keep the churches packed like they used to. There's... No, everything is, is falling apart. And that's something Ardiff had said at the beginning of, of the problematic portions of the virus when people started fighting and arguing on how to deal with it. You know, you got to see the holes in the boat. If, you, if you're going to fix your system, you have to see how it's broken. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, I think that's, that's a beautiful way to see it, too, because... That's, you know, self-sustainability is hugely important. Uh, another reason we want land, we want to be able to grow our own food. You know, uh, a lake is there. Um, I, I haven't hunted for a long time. Um, I, I don't think I will again. Uh, but we have friends who hunt and, and let them come on the land. And if they want to share some of their meat with us, that'd be great. 
I mean, we can literally do it a million different ways. And the less we depend on the system, the more we have to offer in our own selves. I've got a friend who lives in Puerto Rico and he has a bunch of chickens. They, they eat eggs every day. You know what I mean? They do it themselves. Yeah. And if one of them dies, they got chicken dinner that night. Right. That's how it is out here in the country. And I thought about this. And I know we've been talking for a long time, but it all seems relevant. I just did that trip a couple months ago with my daughter where we went up the East Coast and uh, up to Buffalo. Mm. I was in New York City again. Um, and I'm thinking there's people living in this city. Their feet will never touch the earth. They will live and die in this concrete jungle and they will never be connected to the earth. You know, yeah, it's a sad feeling. Right. And it makes me just so much happier to be living in the country and away from uh, basically, I mean, the, the 19th and 20th century city is, uh, you know, people are fleeing cities now, basically. Yeah. They're fleeing yeah. San Francisco in droves, New York City. You got to be crazy to go back to New York. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a huge difference. Uh, me and Kalina, we're feeling the same way. Kalina's lived in cities almost her whole adult life. I mean, she moved out to, to California in her 20s and always lived in towns that were big. Uh, you know, before my separation and divorce with my son's mom, I was on a 12-acre uh, pine tree farm, and that's where I had my spiritual growth. That's where I had my first initial spiritual experience. I think if I would have been living in a city, I would have never got to where I was. And it's nothing bad about the city. You can make something beautiful from living in a city. I'm not saying that at right, all. Right. Like in New York City, you can go to the park and, and see trees and, and look at look at grass and still connect with nature, even though it's, it might feel like a more limited basis than going out in the country. But... Um, out in the country, it's not, for me, it's about nature, yes, but it's more about the energetic fields of all these strangers and people who just have really beat up and beat down vibrations. And it's not their fault, man. They're doing their own thing, living their life, having hardships. But we have people who, in this apartment complex, they let their dog ship in, in the corridor and no one ever picked it up like on carpet in the mutual place where all of us have to walk to get in and out of the building mm -hmm. and eat a bag of garbage and just left it for everyone else and there are people who let their kids run around and they're beating the shit out of each other outside of our apartment I mean that vibration doesn't feel good to be around no um, and when you know it's not and if you don't resonate it with it you'll you'll find yourself in a new environment yeah so. and that's what we're working for tomorrow um I you know, we have to get out early to work, guys. I know I, we should I see start. what time it is. I'm shutting my face. I'm going to neutralize, guys. Thank you for hanging in there. Uh, thank you for, for being awesome and, and being cool. And uh, love you guys. Uh, Pantera, I'm glad you're still here, brother. Um, Ray is one of my friends who I've been friends with for the last couple of years. He helps me on my, my other passion that I've got. Uh, with uh programming and in, in a certain game that i play uh this guy's a technical wizard he's been helping me out man so i invited him over to come over and hang out with us hippies for a while <laughs> so uh thanks ray for being here too brother all right guys i'm gonna shut my face i'm gonna get ready uh i'm gonna rock and roll and we're gonna channel we're gonna channel about the yael first contact all right well i'm gonna run and get a cup of coffee it'll take me like i don't know two minutes or so but i'll be back to talk to you guys all right, love you guys. Thank you, brother, too, for everything. I appreciate it. Love you. Uh, we'll see you guys soon. All right, I'll be back in a minute, guys.
Okay, everybody, I am back at least. I have my fresh cup of coffee here. We're going to see how long it takes for Rob to neutralize. Uh, we have been talking for a while tonight, but, you know, these are important issues. Um, although I'm sure it's never quite said, I think Rob enjoys talking about it and get these things off of his chest, too. That's a, it's a wonderful feeling having an audience. I'm speaking from my own personal experience, having an audience that you can just come and they'll hear you out. You know, uh, one of the most valuable things that we have for each other is being listeners and, you know, what, who listens more than an entire audience. So thank you guys out there for doing that. Uh, Savita, if you're still here, I saw you were in Washington, D.C., but never once said hey to me. That was right in my neighborhood. I mean, not really. But if you drove up, you had to go right through my little town. I don't know if you're still in here. So, yeah, we have lots of topics to talk about tonight. I know it kept circling back around to, um, uh, well, we talked about a lot of things tonight. You know, but these are all important issues, I think, if we are going to ever have open contact with an alien race. We have to sort ourselves out first. And um, I don't know. I'm still a young man. Maybe I'll be here to see it. I think so. I think things are going to get pretty good, actually. For many years, I've always really looked forward to being, like, in my late 60s. Like, I feel like that's going to be a special time in my life. So I got a few more years for that. Don't know what's going to be going on in the world at that point. What's going on with all of you out there tonight, though? You know I like to have an interactive session. And that's hard to do if you guys don't talk back. I can't believe it's June 15th already. Just a few more days for the summer. The longest day of the year. And dare I say it, after that... <laughs> The day is just going to get shorter and shorter again until we get back down to the equinox and then, the, of course, the winter solstice, December 21st this year. We got 2021 will be over before you know it. I don't know where the time goes. That's something that I've debated about with Rob for a while, too. Like, is time going by now because of, like, this sort of quickening, this metaphysical quickening that we're all going through? Or is it just something that everybody experiences as you personally get older? hard to say And speaking that it is almost the summer, are you guys doing anything exciting for the summer? You know, I feel like the past couple of years, like summer hasn't really meant anything to me. This summer feels like summer again. Like, you know, summer used to be an event. It feels like uh, they've lifted all the restrictions here in Virginia, you know, pandemic related restrictions. And it's amazing. It's like people are pretending that it never even happened for the most part. It's like it's like it never even happened. Nobody's really talking about it. There's still a few people that are adhering to the pandemic protocols, but not many, like not many at all. It's like everybody just swept it under the rug and it's over with now. And so there's kind of this um, feeling of celebration around for me. I don't know if it's like that for you guys. And Rob is right. There certainly has been a pickup about uh, UFOs in the news. I'm going to see. I'm going to do a little experiment live on the air. I'm going to do a news search for UFOs. Yeah, two hours ago. Government UFO report is the product of years of military infighting over whether to take sighting seriously. Members of the House Intelligence Committee will receive a classified briefing on Wednesday morning. Yeah, let me actually click on this. Yeah, members of the House Intelligence Committee will receive a classified briefing on Wednesday morning on one of the most controversial topics circulating in Washington today, UFOs. 
The briefing, which was confirmed to CNN by two sources familiar with the committee's plans, comes just weeks before the U.S. intelligence community, community is scheduled to deliver an unclassified report on the matter for Congress. According to one committee source, Wednesday's briefing will be conducted by the Navy and the FBI. The fact that Congress is receiving briefings and the intelligence community is producing reports on what the Pentagon has labeled UAPs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, is itself extraordinary. After years of Washington infighting, including bureaucratic battles within the Pentagon and pressure from, the other members, from certain members of Congress, the U.S. government finally appears to be taking seriously what has for so long been considered a fringe issue. Even as sightings of unexplainable objects rose into the hundreds, Pentagon officials wrestled with how much time and resources to devote to investigating them. Interviews with half a dozen officials, as well as documents reviewed by CNN, depict a U.S. military and intelligence community that struggled over how to remove the issue from the world of science fiction and consider its actual national security implications. So, let's see. And this is CNN. Uh, just for full disclosure, pun intended, but for full disclosure, I don't believe anything the media tells me. Essentially nothing. No matter who it is. Uh, this isn't a left or right thing or a political thing. I just don't. They have an agenda. They're, um, I just don't believe them. But for them to be pushing this out now, Rob is right. Like, why now? You know, we all, I would imagine if you're here listening to the E.T. Whisperer, you, you probably believe that UFOs exist. Uh, in fact, if you're here now and you don't actually believe in UFOs, I'd love to talk to you about why it is you are here. Like, not even kidding. That would be kind of an interesting conversation. Here's one here from NBC News, though. Truth embargo. UFOs are suddenly all over the place. UFOs are suddenly all the talk in Washington. After 75 years of taboo and ridicule, serious people can finally discuss the mysterious flying objects, and even skeptics say that's a good thing. Stephen Bassett and Mick West don't agree on much. Bassett has devoted much of his adult life to proving UFOs are helmed by aliens, and West has devoted much of his to proving they are not. But they both agree on one thing. It's good that, after nearly 75 years of taboo and ridicule, going back to Roswell, New Mexico, serious people are finally talking seriously about the unidentified flying objects people see in the skies. Seriously. I added that in. You know, so why now? And here's another one. The first article I read you is from two hours ago. The one I just read you is from two days ago. Here's one from 17 hours what Endwell pastor and author make of UFO sightings? They may be angels and in the Bible. One day ago, CNN Science. Science and pop culture look to the skies to answer the ultimate question. Are we alone? Uh, you know, and this is, it goes on like this. There's actually a lot of news articles about UFOs. And so the obvious question is why? You know, we, I've believed in UFOs since... I mean, I was being abducted in the 80s. I was pretty sure that this was real to me even back then. It's almost insulting that I would need the government to come out and validate my experience. So I don't... Um, uh, and that's another, that's another kudo for Stephen Greer. That's something that he talked about in the documentary I mentioned. Is like, why do we really need even the government to come out and validate our personal experiences? I'm sure I'm not the only one here tonight who's a contactee or an abductee. Uh, so I, I don't need the government to come out and tell me that my experience was valid. I know my experience was valid. Here we are. Sonia says uh, she's camping as many times as possible, so ready to submerge myself into nature. Yeah, it's wonderful. Deborah says, it is a special time, William. I am 68, and no matter what happens, it is much easier to maintain my vibration. I know. I know. It's a really good time to be alive, guys. Yeah, I just noticed. I'm going to move this up a little. So, Rob should be back any time now. 
you guys might notice when you were talking, when Rob was talking about Mongolian throat singing earlier, I dropped a link in the live chat to a band called Spangle. This is something I've played on the show before. They've really cracked down. Actually, important uh, technical information for everybody. As long as I can get my act together, by the time we meet for the 30th, we're going to try live streaming on another service besides YouTube. Because YouTube has gotten so restrictive, I can't even really play classical music now. Classical music, which is supposed to be in the public domain, you know, Mozart, Beethoven, things like that, they're still copyright striking Rob's channel when I play classical music. And, of course, we can appeal it and it gets, you know, removed, but it's just becoming a hassle. It's um, not to be a fear monger, but I've been telling Rob for probably months at this point, maybe even years, that he's playing with fire by only having his show on YouTube uh, because it's just a matter of time. I, I, you know, they've come for people less controversial than Rob. So we're going to play, the bottom line to that is we're going to play around with live streaming on other platforms and see how that works since YouTube can just flip his switch off. Hello, Sankofa. All is well. You know your topic, Wang, ten uh, Wang, your, <laughs> your topic one tonight. I said Wang. I was thinking about Big Trouble in Little China. I don't know if anybody out there has actually seen that film. If you have not, you probably should. But your topic one tonight. You know, honestly, Cliff, I voted for that topic. Uh, I almost never vote in these things anymore. And I saw that your comment, you were like so excited that your topic was in the lead. So I'm like, well, I'm going to vote for his topic, you know, just to help a guy out. So, yeah. Oh, I love Big Trouble in Little China. I'm wearing the shirt that Jack Burton was wearing. Let's see. Rob says he'll be here in about two minutes. I'll have to take his word for it. I'm I'm the man, one of the best interviewers in the game. Well, you know, I'm waiting for my big break. Not that Rob is not the, you know, not that Rob's not a big game. He is. And actually, you know, one of the things I wanted to talk about when we were on break is like some of the things that Rob has going on, because I don't think he's really clear at his vision, but I'm certain that uh, Rob is going to leave something magnanimous to the world something that rivals the monroe institute or the seth material or something like that uh, he's working on a lot of things behind the scenes that you guys don't necessarily know about we're working on some other things together like the, t the tv show um, but things have been on a hiatus rob's been away our director's been away things are now starting to coalesce again and like artif always says it's not worth doing these things if you're not having fun so when things get crazy, don't be afraid to just put your projects aside and work on it when it calms down. There's no rush in this world anymore. Spoken like a true prodigy. That was a beautiful, beautiful thing. Hello, Rob. <laughs> Hello, brother. How are you? Not too bad. Just feeling dead air. Uh, yeah, I see uh, clips with us, and topic is on top tonight. I, I know you're hyped about that. That's great. Um Oh, what else was I going to say? Um, I don't know. I guess it wasn't important enough to remember. Uh, hmm. Are you talking about your grand vision for the E.T. Whisperer Institute? Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to mention um, Jeremy went back to his mom's last night. Today is the first full day with him there. Um, this weekend, 
me and Kalina are going to pull out the cameras uh, again and, and mess with them and, and play with them. So we might even be able to shoot something this weekend, hopefully. Oh, yeah. Talking uh, about our director went to a place <clears throat> called uh, Douthat State Park where he was incommunicado from the world for a whole week. Talking about unplugging. That's yeah, where Ian I, was. I felt that way out at Kalina's parents' house because their, their cell phone coverage and internet is so bad out there. Uh, they live like 20 miles from a town and then, you know, a hundred miles from, well, 70 miles from a big town. Uh, the only time I felt more out in, in the wild than that is when I visit my buddy from North Dakota, me and Kalina went up there once and I went up there once before, uh, Wherever like we met you was pretty remote. Even that was a grocery store, and it was in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that was literally like uh, you know twenty minutes away from Kalina's parents' house. That was uh, the little town that I was talking about. That was right next to uh, to their house. Actually, I think it was a bit further out than that because we were in uh, we were in that rental house so that we could spend time with their mom there. Yeah, so that wasn't even by their house, but it was close enough. Uh, yeah, so. My friend in North Dakota, when me and Kalina went out there, uh, to pick, I, I was uh, up there to pick up a car because uh, he gave me a car. Just, hey, here's a car. Um, and I went up there, and I had to pee, and we hadn't seen a gas station for, like, literally 50 miles. So I just pulled over to the side, and I looked up, and I had never seen the night sky. I couldn't even pick out a constellation. And, you know, I can easily pick out constellations in any place I've ever been, even in North Carolina, where the lights are almost non-existent. It was so, so many stars, I couldn't even pick out the constellations. It was so beautiful. And me and Kleena, while we were there, we saw uh, half a dozen or more UFOs easily. Um, That's why I love going to the American Southwest, New Mexico, Utah. Oh, like, yeah. That's magic. Atmosphere. Yeah, I can imagine. You know... When I was there, I wasn't awake at night because we were working so early in the morning, and uh, it was it was winter time. No, it wasn't. It was spring. Uh, the days were still very short, though. I remember that. And then I was bummed because I always wanted to to check, but we were in the middle of Ogden too, right in the town. So, but anyway, it was by by far literally the greatest night sky I've ever seen uh, over by Anamoose, North Dakota. It's beautiful out there. All right, guys, I'm going to take a drink. Uh, we're going to jump into this thing. Thank you guys, too, um, for everything, man. Uh, all our, our community here at Patreon has been growing. We're up to, uh, I want to say, uh, close to 80 or 90 members at this point, which is amazing. Um, it really is a great thing. We're going to keep trying to grow this community. Um, and we also want to let you guys know uh, soon we're going to be taking clips of these things too to put on YouTube and uh, our other sites that we're on, like Libri and uh, or Library and uh, uh, what's Bit the shoot, other? Bitshoot, Odyssey, Bitshoot, Odyssey. Yeah, and um, when we do that, we're not going to put anyone's personal information out there. So we just want to let you guys know if we do take clips and, and your question happens to get answered, we're not going to put the part of your name in it. We're not going to put context in it. We're just going to put uh, clips and most likely we'll be doing them from these, the, uh, the in-depth ones instead because it's one topic talked about for a long time. So it's easier to clip it, uh, unless there's something really phenomenal and a personal answer, but no names will be associated. We just want to make sure that people are aware that we're doing this here. You don't know how many people have a session and they're like, you know, your YouTube channels just hasn't had a lot of stuff out there. I really wish I could see regular channeling. I was like, you can. And I tell them about Patreon and they're like, Oh my word. Really? Yeah, we actually have that. So I guess uh, I haven't done a good job about talking about it very much on the videos I do do. The next time we do a monthly poll, as long as everyone in Patreon's cool with it, you should just do it public occasionally, randomly. Yeah, I was actually going to tell you to, to make this one public tonight uh, before we started rolling, but I just totally forgot about it. Um, you know, just because I thought it would be nice to, to share. You know, um, you know, question and answer nights are more definitely private, but... Stuff like this, um, I think you should start bringing more people into the circle. 
All right, let's let's have a, a real quick um, poll, guys. Answer one for yes and two for no. How many of you guys uh, care if we put it public right now? If we go ahead and change the thing public now so that everyone can listen. Um, one for yes, if it's okay to do that, if you think, and two for no. I'd like to see what you guys think. Right, so if it's okay if we turn this chat public to the world, press number one. If you prefer that it be kept private, Press number two. Thank you. Let's see it, guys. Let's see what you're thinking. I know it takes a while to get yeah, to you. Yeah, there's a short delay. <laughs> oh, God. There's 16 of us watching. So and, many, and Cliff, I appreciate all the kind words, by the way. Yeah. Cliff is always amazing. I love Cliff. One. We've got a one, one, one. We got one, one, one. What do we got after one? One. Two comes we got a one. one. All right. We got four, five ones. A few more, and we're over 50% already, right? All right. I'm going to put Kalina as one and myself as one, uh, so that's seven. Uh, William, what do you think? One I or two. Too. I'm always open to, to reach a wider audience. So possible. we're at 50% right now. We need a tiebreaker. Who says who says one? We got one more one to go, and then we're put our Pantera Ray, of course. Beautiful. All right. Pop it on uh, public, brother. All right, Let see. me know when we're on public, and then... Uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Done. All right. Let's see if I get so, a notification. Yeah. So we're going to wait a little bit and see the numbers start popping up a little bit, and then we'll know people are here, and we'll go from there. Once we see about five, ten more people pop in, William. Uh, one. Look at that, everybody. Thank you guys. Love you guys. That's amazing. You guys are great. Actually, I'm gonna put this uh, link on Facebook too, real quick. That'll pop in at least a few people. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for being patient. Uh, thank oh. you, Cliff with a one. You guys are amazing. Uh, all right, I'm gonna pop this on Facebook real quick. Uh, all right, give me a second here. I'm gonna Facebook, and I do talk while I'm texting so of course that'll be fun all right join us now oops we are channeling about first contact all right Let's yes pantera that. share away tell the share world away, brother. thank you anyone who wants to put on your facebook feel free go ahead oops oh no Oh, no, no. I, I posted that without putting the link. That's not helpful, Rob. <laughs> okay, so hold on. There we go. All right, guys. All right. So let's see. All right, we got another person in there. Yeah, share away. Everybody who wants to. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate it, brother. One, look at that. Let's go. Let's get it. All right. So I put a few out there. Um... I'm going to let people come in because I think this is a good topic for people to hear in any way. Uh, and it's a good it, it's a good exercise of being in the moment, too. I love it. All right, guys. We're going to wait for a few more people to roll in. Uh, I'm going to top off my cup of joe one more yeah, time. Yeah, please do. So that's it, guys. Uh, thank you guys for being open with, with your energy and, and sharing uh, the space that you're sharing with us, guys. It's amazing. Um Oh, look at that Canadian awareness. Hello, brother. Uh, everybody, this is Anton. He has his own channel, Canadian Awareness, where he does a lot of truth speak. Me and him are going to be doing a huge interview soon, too, guys, so go check that out. Uh, you, you came just in time, my brother. Um, we are opening this up to the public. This is usually our Patreon only live stream, but we're opening it up to the public because everybody here voted and said that it was a good idea to share this. So we're going to Wait for a couple minutes while people start rolling us in, uh, uh, and then we're going to uh, reintroduce what we've got going on here tonight, guys. Uh, first contact. It's funny because okay. as soon as I came back, we were down two viewers. Like, <laughs> yeah. We went yeah, public and we lost two subscribers. Yeah. That's well. We gained one too. Canadian awareness uh, friend Anton from Canada. Oh, I don't trust the YouTube analytics here. Like, <laughs> no. no way. YouTube analytics not always friend. I think too if it's posted as uh, as private, um, that's definitely going to be. 
adding it in there. All right. Um, give me a minute, guys. I'm going to uh, sign into my main account uh, instead of my secondary one so I can put it in the uh, – in the talk chat too, um, in the, what do you call it? Community, uh, part, uh, the tab of community. That way people know, uh, they'll get a direct, um, thing. Come join us. Uh, come join us. Oops. Us. Playing. About this. All right. Good times. Exactly. Oops, live now. Right. And, oops, that's why I was doing that, because I was holding tab instead, or control instead of shift. All right, so I'm going to post that, guys. All right, um, that should help out. I'll get some more people coming out this way. And actually, I'm going to have to use my own link to get back, because I took it off the spot with the other link. All right, guys, um, so here's what we're doing. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Uh, hello. It's nice to see you guys. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, everybody's well. Everybody's well. We're here. New people are rolling in. Uh, welcome, guys. You guys are at a very beautiful evening, a very auspicious moment. Um, this was meant to be a private Patreon link. We do these twice a month, and everybody here voted to open this up to the public because this is a pretty important thing. Uh, it's an, a pretty important subject, one that we don't talk about uh, in the public as much. And because it's been in the public, I think it's going to be a good subject. Uh, introduce yourself, William, for people who might not know who you are, because they're going to be hearing a new voice if they haven't watched the last few uh, videos that we've done here. That is right. I am William Stowell with the Fincastle Underground. I am one of Rob's, um, I don't know, dearest friends, but not oldest friends. I've been hosting this for maybe a year and a half now. I don't even know. But twice a month when Rob has his Patreon shows, I come here so that Kalina can do the mother thing, which is the most important job in the world. And on the 15th, we do the monthly polls. And on the 30th, we do private questions and answers. So if you're somebody that likes listening to ET Whisperer material, you might have a question or two that you want to ask to Trevor Ardoff. You can do that by supporting Rob on Patreon. And you get a chance to have your question thrown in the mix. And you actually have very good odds of having it asked or answered or both. Asked and answered. Asked and, it does, if you don't ask it, it's not very likely that it's going to get answered. But you That's know. very true. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, am I on mute now or am I not? No, I can hear you fine. Okay, beautiful. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um it's a, uh, I think it's a Wednesday, I think. It's about to be Wednesday. It's Tuesday night. Okay. Tuesday night. Oh, no, it's Wednesday morning. It's 12 We are Wednesday morning, guys. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and take just another breath or two to re-neutralize because I got really excited that everybody wanted to share this with the public. Um, everybody here at Patreon originally uh, invited you guys to come join us for this beautiful night. We're going to talk about... Uh, first contact, guys, uh, with the IEL. That's the subject matter. Uh, if you can go a little more into that while I take a few breaths, brother, about the topic that we chose and why we chose it. All right, no problem. Yes, Rob is definitely neutralizing. As I was saying, my name is William Stowell. I'm broadcasting to you live from Fincastle, Virginia right now. And what we do, if you support Rob on Patreon, uh, you're able to throw in suggestions for what a topic that you would like to have Rob channel about. And then everybody in the Patreon community will vote on it. This month's winner came from Cliff. It's about what first contact with the Yael is going to look like. Uh, we've been on the air. Here, I can tell you exactly in a moment. We've already been on the air for an hour and 39 minutes before we went public for you guys. And usually what we do in these situations is before Rob begins channeling, we just talk about things as a community, as the Patreon community. We talk about how everybody's week went. You know, if there's world events that are going on that are really crazy, we'll talk about those things, what's happening in everybody's lives personally. And what we find is usually those conversations kind of segue into what Treb and Artif are going to talk about during the actual channeling. 
you know, so for example, tonight before we got started and invited in the public, we were talking about um, how many people are, we're losing a lot of people this year. They're choosing to exit three-dimensional reality. They're dying and leaving the world either through natural causes or some kind of accident because things are becoming uh, more intense. The, vibra the vibrations are getting higher and uh, reaching a fever pitch to a level that not everybody's prepared for. And the way that that's tying into tonight is that we're going to have to, as a collective, drastically change our vibration if we expect to have open first contact. So Rob should probably be just a few more moments. He'll be back. He was neutralizing earlier for about 10 minutes. So this time it should just be a few moments. Uh, let's see how everybody's doing here tonight. And also, if you're chatting with us in the chat room on YouTube, make sure that the drop down menu above the chat box says live chat rather than top chat. If it says top chat, YouTube filters out some of the, the responses here. And we see, who do we have here? Canadian Awareness, Lam Canadian Awareness, Lambros, Lisa Hip, uh, Divine Hood, Brittany Marie, hello. Chad, OKC, hey Chad, I think that's the first time I'm seeing you here tonight. Be sure to like this, hit the like button, it really helps the algorithm to support Rob. We all need all the help we can get when uh, combating YouTube these days. And I don't know if I've said this since we've gone public, but uh, we're going to start the next time that we do Patreon. We're going to try streaming on alternative platforms. We're going to see if Odyssey can meet our needs to try and migrate away from YouTube so that we can go back to having more freedom with the content we produce here. Hello, Maggie in Virginia. I'm also in Virginia. I'm in Fincastle, Virginia, in Botetourt County, just north of Roanoke. Wonderful night out here tonight. It almost feels like the fall, actually. It's always beautiful out there. I'm going to be one more minute, guys. I'm going to go grab my other water, and then we're going to rock and roll. All right. Sounds good, Rob. Virginia is my second home. I'm originally from New York, though. We've got Alyssa from Iowa. I was just going through Iowa a couple weeks ago on a long road trip. That was when... Actually, I don't know. Uh, I think we were live. Some of you might have heard that when we were live from the Seth house where we had Rob. If you're into channeling at all, you might be familiar with the work of Jane Roberts, who channeled the, the Seth material from 1963 to 1984. And we did a show where I was at the Seth house in the living room where Jane channeled Seth. And we did an E.T. Whisperer show from there. If you guys are interested in some of the work from James Rob Jane Roberts, you should check out the Seth house on YouTube. They have a fantastic program over there. Maggie's in Fredericksburg, originally from Utica. Yeah, all those New Yorkers come down here. you got to try this place called Gourmelts in Fredericksburg. It's a 90s grilled cheese sandwich store. If you're in Fredericksburg, go there. JW's in the middle of South Africa. Breaking 3D with Keenan is here. Hello. Lisa's in upstate New York. Yeah, that's where the Seth House is in Elmira. We were up in Elmira for a while um, helping the people. Re There's a big, massive restoration project going on for the Seth House, if you guys um, are tuned into that work or not. And if you're not, you should read some of the Seth material. I would imagine that most of you, if you're following somebody like Rob, you've, you've at least heard of it in passing. So, well, it's nice to be here tonight with everybody, a uh, wider audience. Our Patreon family is really growing, though, for sure, since I've been doing this. And I'd like to see some of you guys out there as well. You go to patreon.com and look for the ET Whisperer. I believe the link is in the description of this video. And uh, you know, I think the lowest tier is like $11 a month. You could be part of what we do here twice a month. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. And thank you guys all for coming. Hello to all of you guys. Uh, and Sankofa, our, our good friend here, is the one who brought the subject to the poll. We're going to be talking about first contact with the IEL, and I'm going to take one more drink of water, and we're going to bring in Ardith and let him, uh, let him rip, let him do his thing. All right, sounds good, man.
All right, guys. I will see you on the other side. I love you guys. Thank you all for, for showing up tonight, all of our Patreon people. We always love you guys. All of people who are not on Patreon, thank you guys for coming. Thank you guys for showing up today. Uh, those of you who are coming in live, it's wonderful to see you guys coming in. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let's bring an artist. See what he's got to say about the uh, Yale uh, first contact. All right, guys. All right. See you on the other side. See you, right. Uh, love you, brother. And thank you, too, for, for everything, William. I appreciate it, brother. And thank everybody for being here. Here we go. <clears throat> D-I-F, and this is its spell. We understand that all of you desire to know more, to dive deeply into the construct of that of the all Yell's first interaction with the human collective en masse. But before diving into this construct, there are two things that we have always expressed, and the third that we wish to share on this day. First, that above all things expressed within this day, to know, feel, and of course, to perceive that who are loved in our perspective is of the utmost importance. Secondly, it is our greatest excitement and we think that same great excitement in which we co-create with all of you, individually, collectively, co-creatively, and within the collective form, galactic collective consciousness. Thirdly, we wish to express greetings to William as well. Greetings, Ardiff. Yes, now, before diving into this construct, we must first understand the nature and the identity of that which is the yaw -Yel. The yaw -Yel entities are much as multiple hybridized versions of that which most humans call the grey beings, or most humans call the zetariticuli beings. They are entities that are humanoid in nature, that are not of human lineage in the way that most humans perceive 
but in fact a one matrix version of the human beings that had taken a very different path than humans and Earth collective in which we perceive at this moment. And through their own traveling the matrix and going through the alternate version of their own Earth back into a time and to a place where human identity of your own DNA was capable of taking their own race to continue their incarnation cycle after their own capacity to reproduce was taken away from them, physically, genetically, and chemically. This gave birth to the new construct, utilizing the multidimensional DNA format of the human being's DNA coding and utilizing it for the furtherment of their own race and through their own interactions with human beings upon that level they were able to build many different groups of hybridizations most of you understand the entities that some call the Essasani or shikani others represent the plaiel others know the third wave of generation as the Yahel, and there are many subversions that are between the versions of these as well. For example, between those that are the Plaiel and Yahel, there are several different iterations. And if you were to look in this way, you could say 2.7 is a version that was much closer to the Yahel than that of the Plaiel, and with the construct of their own energy, carve their own part of the evolutionary hybridization program with human beings and are more so like and akin to the version that are the Yahyel. Even though holding greater characteristics of the Plahyel, and what are the difference between the Plahyel and the Yahyel? There is a great difference. There are more human genetics within the version of Yahyel than that of the Plahyel. There are less epigenetics brought into the portions of DNA that are passed along in the hybridization program between the waves of two and three. And these constructs are small differentials and all subcategoric constructs that are between both the second and third wave also hold their own iteration of changes that are more so dedicated to being more human than what was before. And what purpose does being more human hold? The purpose is different for each entity, and each entity that is involved with the process itself have one shared common goal, of course, hybridization for the furtherment of their own race. But the individual processes are that which are similar to humans. Why do humans agree on so level to be taken out of the construct of their own livelihood? and their own lifetime circumstances and choose to be a participant in the sharing of their own DNA. Well, of course, some humans do not perceive it in this fashion. They only perceive that another being may come into their domain and to take part of their own physical DNA unshared with their own hybridization program and causes entities to feel as if they are violated in that way. And we understand the purpose behind this belief there must be an understanding, something that was wild and much different than what was expected previously, and then find reasoning for. Most humans find conclusion either that they were victim of the co-creation with these entities or a blessed inhabitant co-creator with these consciousnesses constructs of energy hybridization. And those that have seen a blessing in this construct will feel a greater deal of emotional clarity when dealing with the energy that is put in front of them. Those who feel wronged in that way are of course going to feel in that sense of victimhood, in the sense of victimization, as in their own mind there was never permission given. And this differentiates the constructs of human categories that are those who are abducted and those who are co-creators of the situation and the contactee in their own terms. Now, as you go closer towards the Yahyel energy in all the iterations between second and third generation and go past that version, you'll start to perceive that the physical appearances also concur with the amount of DNA that is given and the properties of the genetic born the human 
to be utilized in the hybrids more so. This means that the first generation looked more so as the greys than they would the human beings, and the second generation looking as a very close split of those two, and the third generation of Yahyel looking extremely human, but having larger eyes and the frames of body tending to be smaller than that of the average human being. All of these categories all desire their own co-creations with the different purposes, just as humans in their own hearts and minds also desire their creation for the different experiences that can be had from that level. So let us dive in first to the understanding that these beings are co-creating with Earth and, of course, are part of the hybridization program within the Earth Co-Collective. If all of us are able to perceive that level, then the next level is able to be perceived even deeper. These entities have been communicating with humans for a very long time. They have worked with humans from the first layer of the grey beings for several hundreds of human years, and they are not tied deeply to linear time, such as humans therefore have even showed up into your past even though, linearly speaking, they were not in Earth's time environment at that moment. There are pictures upon your own hieroglyphics that show entities represented symbolically and direct representations of those that were grey over 3,000 years previous to your now time, but have only showed in four to 600 years of co-creating with humans. And the reason that they are not tied to time allows them the fluidity to go between one energy and the next. Time being tied more so to the conscious state of their own vibrational field than that of the linear pathway of time that is experienced by all of them. So understanding this is also a very important process to perceive the individual perspectives of those that co-create. Most of the entities that are known as the grey beings themselves, or that are known as the Zetariticula in that way, are of course less emotional than humans. This is the stereotype that most of you already know and understand. There is a reason for that energy. In their own transformation. In the physicality, they desired to first go more so into their own inner technology and then desired to balance that with a heightened sense of thought and mental energy focus that created a form of imbalance with those versions. And they continued to progress less into the heart-centered feeling, emotion centers that many human forms that are probable future versions of you that are more in balance with themselves and more so into the mental states and progressively continued towards scientific understanding. There's a reason for this as well. We will continue after hydrating. One moment. Of course. <clears throat> At this time, as they are progressing towards scientific constructs more to stand so for a reason. The environment of their version of Earth became instable in the environmental structure itself. Technology had grown and increased, much as your technology on Earth in this version had, creating imbalance with society and imbalance with society versus nature. The society of those that are second density beings, that are animals from your perspective, of course, had been manipulated and out of balance a great deal time before this. But the energy leading towards further and further imbalances created a threshold which could not be walked backwards unless those in the mental state from their own perspective could enhance to the degree in which can freeze that imbalance and walk back the imbalance to that center portion of finding more sustainability and more habitability with the environment around them. This could not be had at the time. Now, there are many variations of entities that were gray beings from your understanding, some that are not genetically linked to human beings themselves, but these are not the entities that we are expressing in this day. But even those that are grey beings that hybridize with humans and came from a separate matrix, 
there are also infinite versions of these. This is why it is hard for most humans to peg down the history version of that. But one common thread that goes through the multiple dozens and hundreds of versions that have been co-creating with Earth in different various versions of Earth, that all of your own consciousnesses have been weaving in and out of, of course, of understandings that their own genetics could not be saved. At this time, the energy for themselves became so imbalanced that they could no longer live in the planet that once they called home and left, and going through the entirety of the galaxy could find no DNA that was compatible with their own. This brought them further down the track of the mental energy, and working with other entities whose technology was much greater brought them through the threshold of the alternative version that humans would call a separate form of matrix. This brings them to your here and now, in your linear past, and brought about the hybridization program, knowing that the race that represented this great task, this great chance for them to continue with their own race, was given at this Earth, in this density, and this dimension, and this matrix, of course. Now, <clears throat> going into the Oriel specifically, as they have worked with humans, they have worked mostly in the center of knowing and understanding human, but holding their composure as fourth density beings and holding the centered heart energy that encompasses what the fourth density portion of the soul evolution is. Some of you are aware that as you are in third density, the sole purpose of experiencing the incarnations over and over is to find your sense of self, to find your own personal humanness in the human incarnation cycle. And the fourth density, to step out of your third chakra and your sense of self into the heart chakra and in to your connection to connections. Now, when we say this, we do not mean your connection only in love, only in your heart desiring to connect with more humans. What we mean specifically is your connection to all things that you experience. When you look at your own computer, there's technology embedded. And that technology, of course, is an entity onto itself. Yet it has an intimate relationship with you. You utilize that energy for the purpose of growth in your own experience. Therefore, the shared experience is a connection. You have a connection with all things in your physical environment, whether you perceive it, understand it or not. <clears throat> One moment, we'll hydrate and continue. All right. <clears throat> the energy that you have in relationships is your most understood and perceived connections. And of course, those are the greatest part and the first step of your fourth density journey. As most of you understand, fourth density journey at your year of 2012 was a precipice of change. What some of have an understanding as well as that in the cycle that led to that expression that was eight years in previous to the construct and nine in total before and of course nine years afterwards eight years after the precipice year and going forward into your time span holding an 18 year total cycle the end being at the end of your year in 20 and 21, the cycle becomes finished. That cycle represents not only the threshold of the precipice being passed in your year of 20 and 12, but your initial steps into the ending portions of a great deal of systems that create more third density vibration. All of them have been walking around your planet for nine years in total as fourth density beings, and the majority of humans cannot perceive that they are fourth density beings. Those who have worked on your own psychic ability and the psychic networking within the chakra system, within your auric field, within your connection to the earth and to the grid system, have understood more so what fourth density expressions and experiences are. Limiting your feeling of being tied to time, letting the fluidity of time that is of your fifth dimensional energy experience 
also the fifth dimensional feeling of time loosening. That expression is one that gives you the opportunity to start going into that same level that the Yogyal have already been upon for the birthing of themselves at the start of their incarnation cycle through the hybridization program and forward. Now, the Yogyal as entities all have their own personal reasons and own personal desire to co-create with humans. The majority of those are hybrids themselves from the generation previously. There are those who have sexually reproduced within their own race and those entities still hold the form of hybridization from their grandparent energy. And that gives them still human form of energy but not as deeply connected to the level of humanness as they were not direct inhabitants of those bodies that held specifically 50% or less of the human genetics in their own co-creation. Most entities that are in the Yoyal collective consciousness are those who are highly benevolent. If you are looking at the entire spectrum of the race, you would look at over 85% benevolency. And we place this as a common format of those who are the type 2 and type 1 variety. Those who are type 2 are still connected to benevolency, despite what many humans believe about being a type 2 race. With that construct of energy placed within their own consciousness, they can go as high as 94% benevolency. This means that they care more for the free will of human beings than many races who work with you, including multiple races that are Pleiadian in nature, multiple races that are Syrian in nature, and multiple races that are Octurian and Andromedan in nature. Even those that are non-physical manifestations of co-created collective consciousnesses from your local solar system of Venusian and Jovian and Saturian consciousness have higher forms of benevolency than those that are in the type 2 of your own solar system spectrum. And as all of you are highly aware, that in the human capacity at a type 2 level of consciousness, that humans hold approximately a 50% benevolency rate, as half humans hold a vibration of what most humans perceive as selfishness and others' selflessness. Now, in that spectrum alone, there are multiple subspectrums, but knowing that you are quite diverse in the vibrational spectrum and field of consciousness, the Yogyal are more than happy to work with humans at the level that humans are. This is what differentiates them from the first co-creation of the hybridization programs with those that are Essesoni or Chikoni and those that are Ployer. They are more attuned to the vibration of Earth because from the time of their birth and from the time of their own incarnation cycle whether it be one incarnation or several, they have understood the study of human behavior, human psychology, of human vibration. This allows them to co-create more deeply. Now, to the topic at hand about the Yoyel's co-creation, it has been expressed through many entities that the Yoyel will be the first to work with humans at a physical contact level. And this still holds true with the highest probability. One moment, we'll hydrate and continue. Okay. <clears throat> with those that co-create with human beings, it allows that level to still be within your highest probability and within the highest capacity to work with humans at a level that humans are able to receive. All of you understand those that are type 2, that are highly benevolent, and those that are type 1 would not come into Earth until the vibration of Earth is ready. They would not come to co-create with high forms of imbalance between the collective halves. As all of you are aware, there are still folds in the vibration of Earth that do cause separation of vibration. And with that construct, they would not be landing in your yards, as you perceive, in that day of tomorrow. But 
all of you are going through uniquely specific experiences. The contact that starts first goes internally. And once enough humans work internally and create that form of contact, then the contact in larger scales with your yell will work. You do not have to only telepathically work with the Yell in order to achieve this. There are many races that are already working telepathically with humans to help raise their awareness, to help raise their consciousness levels, to help integrate higher percentages of the higher fractal consciousness into the physical body in order to expand one's own mind, heart and soul. With that energy and with multiple fronts of that energy working with humans, you are growing into that level where more and more become aware in each day. Most of you ask, how is contact able to be made in such a way? And we have shared this uniquely in the same capacity that we have shared through all of the time in co-creating with you. The way that you open your telepathic centers, the way that you experience your own heightened consciousness is simply one indication of the growth and expansion that you hold as being yourself. Now we understand the word self is highly differential from one of you to the other, and in your own minds it is highly different from what we would perceive you as. When we express being yourself to the highest degree in which you are able to be, what we mean, living in your now moment, following your own excitements, staying in that now moment as to not project levels of consciousness outside of your now moment, not to project it into your future with concerns or worries of what could be next, not looking to your past to ask yourself the question, why am I who I am in this moment? Is it a collection of memories from childhood that creates the me that I am? Yes and no. Generally, and specifically, it is not. The experiences of that of the past that you hold on to, of course, will affect your vibration. That is what we mean by being in your now moment. That is what we mean by centering the energy of that now moment in order to be the person that you are. And within that construct, opening your beliefs without expectation without believing that I am only able to achieve this by going through meditation courses for one decade, or without going to live in a mountain for hundreds of years telepathically, without going to certain instructional classes for those who teach how to channel. Simply by being yourself, having excitement to open your telepathy, being present in the moment and not having expectations, you open the forefront and the doors in order to expand yourself into those regions. That is how contact is made. All of you are in the astral projected realm and each and every day of your specific time, each time that your head touches the pillow of your bed, every time that you go into your sleep state, you are going to one of three levels of the sleep state consciousness. The first and second layers are exactly the contact that all of you have desired. You are meeting with extra dimensional beings. You are co-creating with extraterrestrial consciousness. And you are doing so in every day of your time. To hold the vibration of what it is, to be present in your now, can allow you that same experience as your eyes are awake. One moment. We'll hydrate and continue. All right. <clears throat> While all of you hold the vibration present to yourself, the internal contact being the focus, and your telepathy opening with no expectations on how, what, where, or why, it gives you the greatest opportunity to have that contact yourself. As all of you have seen simply by looking to your internet collective form of consciousness, if you are looking at 10 years into your past and looking at this day, in your now, comparing the amount of entities who have made contact internally, you will see it grow exponentially. And we understand some of you hold beliefs that would be perceived as rigid to the level of how we would perceive others connecting. 
Some that you fear perhaps may not be authentic in the nature in which they produce the level of consciousness, but this version of your belief aside, even consciousness that is being forced into a co-creation is still there to be had. The construct of your own co-creation every night, whether you remember it or not, is being had. Your experience of expanding yourself without the worries of what happened yesterday and tomorrow put you in that center to open. And once the entire Earth vibration opens more so to this, it gives you that opportunity as a collective. Now, we understand the unique challenges that have occurred in the Earth collective consciousness in the past two and four years of your time have been exponentially much more difficult for the majority of you. It has forced you to look at the systems of your Earth in which are not ideal for the level, for the vibration, for the capacity of co-creating with other consciousnesses, be it in a physical or telepathic manner. And of course, you are correct. But as we have shared many times, that the level of your own personal understanding of why this is occurring is important. Our own reflection only shares that in which we have shared previously, that in order to see what needs to be fixed in your society, you must first see what is broken. And the broken portions of your society have shown themselves clearly in the last two and four years of your time, respectively. This circumstance of energy this version that many of you see as difficult situations are, of course, teaching you to be the greatest version of yourself. You have noticed it in others, as they have been one vibration for the entirety of time that you have known them, and all of a sudden they become outspoken and hold stances to their beliefs. And some of those beliefs, of course, you are resonating with others that you do not. But each individual takes more deep stands concreting their own form of consciousness that is personified within their body. The level of their own understanding, whether it be correct or incorrect by your perspective, is true to their own. This makes them more of who they are. This could not have occurred without the difficult circumstances as you perceive it. What contact looks as in the first day is what all of you imagine it would be. There would be announcements by those that understood and knew already for many years that they existed, that they are coming, and that they are peaceful and have been working for them, and of course making a grand spectacle as much of your meteors do in the terms of co-creating. And this would occur in great ways. We understand many humans also hold a fear that those who are in position to tell you that someone or something would arrive, would not be able to share with you honesty or truth. At the time that this would occur, there would be no level of manipulation that would be needed. And if human beings worked from their own capacity to try to pull the wool over the eyes of humans, it would be seen very clearly and obviously by all of you who tap in with your own heart and mind consciousness. It would be perceived at a level in which your heart and third chakra would be out of balance with that experience. When you meet the Yah Yel, you will know that they are true heart. You would know that their love for you is only that that a child can have for their parent or vice versa. A parent can have for their child because it is a genetic relation to you. You would understand their own constructs of their own desire to work with humans as they would relate it clearly to you and there would be no questions within that air and if humans work from that opposite side all of you will feel this greatly and clearly and this construct is the same in this day as it has been for many years the probabilities and possibilities of this expression are not lost to any of all of you who are here in this moment understand that this was a possibility. Whether consciously in your mind or the back of your mind, you understand that energy. And you know it because you have lived it in so many incarnations previously. 
You're tapping into those incarnations. Be mindful as you go into your dream states. As you recall, the entities that lived in ancient Egypt, that lived in your South America, that lived in your India, that lived in your Asia, that lived in your North America, that lived at every continent on your planet, that told stories of the gods that came, they also had met entities and were there for the landings and greetings. They too understood when they were being manipulated and not in longer term, of course. But with this specific generation, one that has been shown so many manipulations in the last four years as all sides of your governmental and all sides of the social economical have tried to show you things that in your own heart was not resonant. You will know that resonant manipulation or the resonant form of heart's true when you see it instantly. We are ready for your queries at your leisure. Well, thank you, Ardiff. It sounds like you covered a lot of the things I was going to ask you about, but maybe we can dive in a little bit deeper on these. <clears throat> for instance, yes, of course. Well, one of the things I was going to ask is that we had talked a lot before you had joined us tonight about how the human vibration has to change before contact can be possible. You had mentioned that um, the Yael would not arrive on the planet until the vibration was fit for them. Would that be they would not do it or they could not do it? Because we had some questions whether they could even exist on the planet with the way humanity's vibration currently is. Yes, with those who are masters of their own creation, they would not. But they would also understand that they could not if they were attempting to move forward in a time that was not resonant. The circumstances in their own experience would show resistance. This is what they know innately. They are born with this understanding, unlike humans who have to work hard to remember that version. So in that way, it is both and it is either. And it is either. All right. Um, it's going to take me a second to really get this next idea across. So bear with me. <clears throat> You're talking about how in the future that this is happening, there'll be a sort of internal knowing on the behalf of humanity that this is an authentic, genuine, loving experience. Uh, the way you describe this seems like a world vastly different than the one we have now. I'm being totally serious when I say things like... Uh, every major system we have would, would have to be totally collapsed by them. Like the academic or college world, they're very big on empiricism, that knowledge can only come from the five senses. Well, if you have an entire population of people that understand alien contact is real, what happens to the college system or the legal system? If it's more um, understood that we create our own reality, you know, that totally changes the dynamic between killers and murder victims, that they have this sort of thing going on. I know it's convo. Oh, and the church as well. Uh, you know, this would necessitate the Catholic Church losing its entire grip on things and, and religions as a whole. So maybe you can address more practically what would happen to these institutions that have been in, in, in the world for so long. Yes, of course. First of all, you perceive the systems as if the cult creation with these races or any race that desired to work with humans physically could not exist in circumstances that are similar, yet all of you have perceived the lessening version of the grips that those systems have had on your society. Although we understand now it seems very small and minimal to the construct of your own perspective, it has had great changes simply in the last 100 years. While some systems have become more powerful, of course, others have become much more weakened. It is the level in which all of you are able to open that inner sense before. So in that way, it can happen in one month of time of your time, or it can happen 30 years in the future. This will be greatly dependent upon how many humans are accessing their own internal understanding, but also how most humans who do not have internal processing in the way that we are expressing, with the psychic networkings included, are simply processing what is occurring around them and allowing it to shift their beliefs in the moment. And this is occurring as rapid fire in this moment. 
Well, you know that in the 3D world, I have a background in sociology. And so I occasionally come across different articles. Uh, one was that how college enrollment is down, that people are just basically not going back to college. And also that uh, people are walking away from their jobs in mass. I was at a uh, restaurant the other night there was a sign for 11 openings and nobody's even going to work and I um, I took this to mean in a metaphysical sense that people instead of going back to a more formalized type of employment situation they're breaking off and doing their own individual thing supporting themselves locally in some way and not really adhering to the rigorous uh, time structure that our society has laid out for them Yes, of course. In this construct, the human behavior within, connection with one another and society at home, of course, is problematic in the human expression from the perspective. And of course, the signs that you are seeing with human readiness, of course, is another portion of energy that has to be overcome by that human perspective. The internal consciousness that humans work with that make contact in that way are already progressing in the levels of understandings that humans are holding of themselves. Now to compare what is going on around you and what you perceive of course not only is human nature but it is important to see the reflections of the moment so that you are able to see a greater cause of consciousness but at the same level of understanding even the systems that are of the lowest vibrational systems are still being changed and sought after in different ways, as it were one year previous, or that it is of 10 years previous. Looking at the flow and energy of those shifting systems will always be a great indicator for you, but it is important also to perceive your own perspective of those energies. If you are not able to see your own perspective of those energies, it will not give you clearly the reflection that is meant to be shown. If you express yourself by seeing the hunger stats or the welfare system statistics that are going up, you can perceive this as multiple different ways, that more humans are desiring and needing help and getting it. Or you can perceive it in the way that more people are just simply being lazy and desire to feed from the government. Those two different perspectives hold vastly different reflections in which you are able to see that reflection. But what it reflects to our own selves is that more people are going into the system that gives and less into the system of their own energies given that is not desired. Although it can be perceived as a negative consequence to other human beings, they are working with the systems that give them the help that they desire, that they require, that they need in order to separate themselves from a system that otherwise could be damaging to themselves, one that they feel enslaved to, or one that they cannot connect to in the first place. So the energy that is there shows reflections of the energy financially, the systems that are breaking down, the energies of jobs that have gone down, of course, systematically as a part of the environment and the nature of economics. Yes, of course, this is all part of that logical conclusion, but the energy that is underneath the reflection of that, your own personal experience with contact, is something that is not related in many ways and is related greatly, depending upon your own position, depending upon your own environment that you are going into in that creation as well. All right. Well, uh, something else, and Rob uh, was interested in this as well. Uh, we've noticed a lot in mainstream corporate news that they're talking about UFOs constantly now. And Rob and myself are a little suspicious of this sort of thing because of the uh, known misinformation from the government. What is the motivation behind the mainstream attention on UFOs at this point? Yes, of course. In that co-creation, it is a topic in which others are starting to talk more about. In that way, the media presence in the co-creation with humans will always do what gives them financial benefits. And going through talking about what others are talking about is always the most direct way to find their financial wellness and boosting. And of course, the governmental system, there are one and two entities that are including their own energy of desire to know more about this into a bill that had thousands 
of sub-articles, one that could be slipped in extremely easy without anyone knowing because there were billions of dollars being handed out in multiple directions to many different causes. And with doing this, they were able to get away with finding their own pet project to be looked upon on the dime of the government in that way. So, of course, for their own excitement, it was a no-brainer. It was a release to understand the information that they already had great desire to know and knew that under any other circumstance, it would never be looked at in a serious fashion. It would never be looked at in any way that would be taken seriously by the other government. But of course, with all of the issues that are within the coronavirus energy and with the financial energy, it was not seeable by any human. Therefore, it could go slipped under the radar easily. And then the curiosities for those people would be itched, for lack of better terms. <clears throat> okay, I have some questions about, and this might seem ridiculous, but I'm being totally serious about practical considerations um, when beings from off-world arrive here. From what you say, it sounds like the world will change, but what's going to stop, say, UFO lands in New York and New York State wants to tax these people or force them to get IDs or conform to our own uh, laws or something like that? Is there going to be that type of uh, oppression happening at that point? Yes, in that way, you would understand that this would be the last thing on most humans' mind. And of course, the government works as the government works, and they desire to have their own understanding of the way the world should work but at this time there would be no focus upon anything but figuring out how to keep humans calm as you understand not only does government in its own capacity work as a desire to hold the vibration of things together but it also works as a compartmentalized version with multiple different sections that work in different areas at that time where it would come, it would be known to many, but it would still hold a vibration of lack of clarity for many of these places and would be the last thing upon their own list of things to do. Well, and like I said, I hate to, maybe this is more a window into my own mind, I hate to bring up these negative outcomes, but what's to stop uh, a bunch of um, basically frightened human beings from trying to attack these beings? Will their own vibration prevent any such attack? Or how will this all look? Yes, of course, the vibration in which could cause harm, deficiency, harms of that human interaction in that way would not be allowed in those who are mastering their own creation. It is simply as saying as if you go into a co-creation with other human beings, anything is on the table as the vibration of humans hold, both positive and negative attributes from the perspective of human being. One human being holds the capacity to love another greatly and also murder another. In that vibration spectrum, all things are able to happen. In beings who work only with the higher portions of their own consciousness, that energy would not be a consideration, as there can be many humans who are violent, many humans who are irrational, many humans who are co-creating a desire to kill things that do not make sense to them. But at that time, it would be a highly regulated, highly protected area, simply by the government who hosts them. Therefore, that energy would not be a part of the co-creation. Okay, because these are all, and I know you get this question a lot, I almost hate asking it because it's not definitive, but do you have a timeline where you see this sort of playing out? I know that this is on people's minds. Yes, of course. Now, you understand the vibration of all probabilities that there's always one probability that is higher. And at this time, over 37 years in the future is the highest probability. But there are probabilities in the top 10 percent higher that are as soon as 4.3 years from this time. So going from a spectrum, there are some that are several hundred years into your future. And it's all basically up to us at this point. Yes, as it always has been in that way. Well, have we as a collective done anything that surprised even you? Are we ahead of the game? I think we are. Yes, of course. The highest probabilities are often those that come into manifestation at one time or the next. But with human beings, that is a very low threshold in the time that we have spoken of, the span of two to four years. 
the mid-central portions, the probabilities are those that tend to land, while those that are higher tend to be the opposite of what has occurred. So in that way, you have kept all of your selves guessing, and of course, you kept that energy in manifestation, momentum. All right. Well, um, I think that basically covers I've everything that I've had, all the questions I wrote down. It seems very um, – I'm looking forward to it. I'll still be alive in even 37 years, I'm sure. But it seems yes, like a, a vastly different world. I hate to seem so cynical, but my first question is if, if aliens land in New York, like how much are they going to get taxed? <laughs> That's where I'm at. Yes, of course. And of course, as you understand, it has a great deal to do with your belief systems that you hold, but also your experiences in co-creating with the government for the entirety of your life. And of course, it leads you to that foregone conclusion from your own perspective. And of course, this part of the energy is what we have expressed that will help liberate all of us to stay in your now moment as frequently as possible. We understand as human beings, there are things that must be planned head on from the environment that you are in in this moment. We are not saying that you should just simply let all of the obligations of your own mind be left behind. But we are saying be more present in the now, as much present in this now moment as you are able. And that requires also cutting a great deal of the past in expectations for your now. And of course, the energy that is behind this will also be given to you in examples and reflections that are near you at any given moment. When you look at these reflections, remind yourself you will always receive the reflection that is in alignment with the vibration of yourself in that moment. If you choose to see the best out of all things, you can start seeing the best in all things. If you choose to see the worst in all things, of course, you will always see that worst thing. So by being optimistic, for lack of better terms, it tends to provide greater reflections up a positive sensation. But understand that being honest with yourself is also very important. Some of those beliefs are part of your personality, not a part of cynicism, not a part of a broken human mind, not a part of an emotionally disabled human. It is the construct of energy that is a part of your own soul sensation that you manifest in this incarnation. So honor your own vibration as well. Be honest with yourself, but also recognize that places that you do hold resistance as well. Uh, fantastic advice, Artif, as usual. Um, I have another interesting question. And when we talk about our society changing, it always comes down to the academic world, you know, the college or school systems, the legal system, the religious systems, and the medical systems. Those seem to be the four big institutions that sort of govern human beliefs. Is there going to be a new system that emerges after all of these other ones sort of fail? Yes, of course, there'll be multiple systems, each one that is replaced by one that falls, each that fails another to step into its vibrational frequency. And of course, those that are at the top of the human conscious mind will be that which starts the replacement. Many of those will start and fail. Many of those will go halfway and fail. And eventually, after consensus of many human consciousnesses agreeing on what works and doesn't work, of course, the system would be more aligned with the vibration of what is best for humans. And this is a process that can take short amount of time or long pending upon how quickly you learn from the mistakes that you've made previously. And in the way we are saying mistakes, what we are saying is in the way that you are processing as you are going, in the way that you interpret it as well. All right, well, I think that about covers it, unless there's something that I'm missing that you think we should know about that we haven't touched on. Yes, the only thing that we'll say in closing is as all of you desire to go out into the cosmos and be a part of the galactic solar system collective on outward, remind yourself that the first contact that occurs is internal. After that, you are able to grow outward and expand, but first it must be internal. That means meeting the honest version of yourself, meeting the truest version of yourself, and then allowing that space of vibration that is open to have that contact that is internal to start with, that can grow outward. By doing 
it's in your own personal experience, the reflections that you see also will be ones that are more open for the vibrational frequency of contact. This is how it has started, this is how it progresses, and this is how it is finalized in the Earth Collective form. We wish to also express to all of you that it's been our greatest excitement in co-creating with you, that as you are asking the queries we see, it allows us to perceive the parts of your energy that we have never perceived. That means we have also perceived the parts of ourselves that we have never perceived previous. As you are growing, so too do we grow. We congratulate all of you for your growth and we thank you for our growth as well. We bid you all to do for this evening and of course, you are loved. Adieu. I do, Adieu, Adieu. <clears throat> All right, I go. It went fantastic as usual. Oh God, you see that? All right, guys. Um, I hope everybody's uh, doing well, hanging in there. For some reason, my tab went off, so I can't say hi to everybody. Um, well, we've got a lot of people in here. Uh, 56 concurrent viewers right now but only 27 likes so be sure to hit the like button on your way in or out guys thank you for that oh wonderful guys hey all right well i'm glad uh everybody got a chance to come in and say hi um wonderful to see everybody here um okay for some reason uh it doesn't appear to be mm, going in the live chat here oh maybe it's because it's not playing that probably helps all right, well, either way, guys, I'm trying to see everybody who might have come in who wasn't here uh, before. Savita, Dever, you guys were here, you're here. Uh, Sweda. Uh, Frederick, hello. I just want to say hi to everybody before I jumped off. Uh, and Keishi, hello. Stella, hello. All right, guys, I'm glad to see you guys coming uh, and being a part of tonight. Anyone else? Let's see. Brad, CW. CW as in CW Chanter? Yeah, how could you miss him? He's, he I, I he owns I'm the not chat room. I'm seeing the same screen as you. Oh yeah, he owns the chat room at this point. <laughs> I don't. It's not surprising to me. Hey CW, I do him, brother. Uh, I will be very interested to read what CW is writing. My dear friend CW guys, he's great. I just shared one of his videos on my Facebook wall about the channeling community and about uh, some things that he said about that. You should go check that out, guys. It's on my wall. Well, I will be interested to read that. For whatever reason, when I turn on this uh, video, it's not giving me the live chat. It's just giving me the... Uh, it looks like the stream's already ended for some reason. No, we're still on. Okay, well, it's just probably... You know how YouTube is. Either way, guys, um, CW, hello. Everybody else, hello, who came in after I started channeling. Hello. Uh, CW, I can't wait to see that. All right, guys. <laughs> well, I'm glad everybody who was here tonight um, was here. Uh, we want to thank everybody who um, jumped in tonight. We really appreciate all of our Patreon people um, who who let us share this with the greater public. An important conversation to have for sure. Um, I don't get to do as many things on YouTube as I like to, so it's nice to get uh, this one out there to everybody. Um, uh, Patreon people is a it's our good group right now man we've really grown out our community there um, so we thank you guys all for being a part of that we love you guys I, I've got to get off man it's one in the morning and we've got to go look at our property early tomorrow I'm already saying our property because I feel it man I feel like we're going to get it so yeah the ET uh, Whisperer Institute yeah the, the ET Whisperer Institute it's got a ring to it right guys all right, guys, I love you all so much. Thank you guys for coming tonight. Thank you for being a part of tonight. Um, and we'll see you guys on the 30th when we're doing our Q&A. Uh, if you're not a part of Patreon now, just go to patreon.com slash whisper. It's in the description. Check out, and then uh, we'll go from there, guys. Love you guys, and uh, we'll see you on the 30th. All right, that sounds good. We are wrapping it up tonight. Very, very long. We've been on for two hours, 33 minutes, and 49 seconds at the time of this. 
Uh, it is now June 16th, 2021 at 107 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am your host, William Stowell of the Fincastle Underground. We've had another successful monthly poll channeling with Ardiff and everybody's favorite ET whisperer, Rob Gauthier. Thank you, everybody, for being here. If you're uh, not a member of Patreon, please check us out on Patreon and throw a little love Rob's way and you can join us on these things twice a month. Thank you, everybody, and have a fantastic night. <laughs>